Also, I want to send a shout out to all the boys at Woodward Sports. That's right. Braylon Edwards, Ryan Armani, Maz, Joey Radio, Stick, Alex, the whole crew over there. There's a show called The Bottom Line. It's out from 2 to 4 p.m. Every day, Monday through Friday. Go to their YouTube channel. Just type in Woodward Sports on YouTube. You can look at all their programming, all their stuff, and catch everything they are doing. Remember, shout out to The Bottom Line. airs from 2 to 4. Every day, Monday through Friday. And here we go. Friday, December 3rd, Armani and Edwards, the bottom line, Woodward Sports Network. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, shout out to DJ Tom T. baby. Appreciate you. Oh, wait, I got to knock on this window. Hold on, hold on. I got to knock on this window. Here we go. He's looking around. He's looking. He's trying to do it one more time. Do it one more time. Do it one more time. <laughs> he's, 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 I think that's great, dude. Yeah, he's he's had enough of you. Can't see nothing. We got the man in the middle. He is a former two-time captain of the Michigan Wolverines. The great Jarrett Irons, my friend. Jarrett Irons. Now look at this guy coming back here, by the way. Hello. <laughs> How you doing, my man? It has been so long since we had a chance to talk. You are back in Detroit now. Uh, and, and what a time to be here, right? It's a wonderful time to be here. I love it here. I'm just moving from, uh, from Chicago. I lived in Chicago for 17 years. And my dad moved me out here. My family loves it, so it's been great. And now with Michigan winning uh, this season, it's been, it's been wonderful to live here. All right, Braylon, uh, my friend, good afternoon to you. Thanks for getting Jared in here, too. <laughs> Yo, so, so the great thing about Jared is uh, I've been around Michigan football my whole life. Obviously, dad played there, so I was running around the sidelines when Jim Harbaugh was you know, quarterback and et cetera. Like, the two, uh, in terms of memories, of the first individuals I met at the University of Michigan actually had a relationship and remembered. The first person I ever remember meeting at Michigan had a relationship was Ricky Powers. Ricky Powers was the first person I actually literally walked into the living room. I mean, walked into the living room. I walked into the locker room after a win. He gave me his jersey. He said, shh, don't tell Big Johnny. Ricky, Ricky's good people. He said, shh, don't tell Big Johnny. And the second person that I met in terms of I had a relationship was Jerry. I met Jerry in 94. Oh. And le literally, man, he had this massive individual, no neck, you know what I'm saying? 6'1", <laughs> six, 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 235, 240. And he was the nicest human being, man. Like, he, like, let, him, like, let me walk around, shadow him, and kick it at the game. And we've been friends ever since. Ever and, since. And I end up turning around playing at Michigan as well, man. And now, you know, he's big brother, but I'm big brother, too. So, yeah. I love Jared. And, you know, it's great. Hey, hey Stan, moment. Stan told me, he's like, look, you got to talk to my son, man. He's got all his friends going to the state. You, you, he's thinking to lean that way. I was like, no, dude, he's going to go to Michigan. <laughs> I can wrap my arms around this. Jared <laughs> wasn't having that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially <laughs> back then. No. Tom no. Madsen went along with the. Uh, with us as well. Maz, good afternoon, my friend. What up, fellas? I'm an All-American from Michigan as well. Yeah. Via <laughs> well, Jersey. I, <laughs> well, we can see you got the pullover today representing. You know there is a big football game uh, on Saturday. Big Ten Championship game. Finally, in my best rock voice, finally. <laughs> the Michigan finally. Wolverines the have rock <laughs> has come back to <laughs> Indianapolis. About time. It is yeah. about time that they are there. Braylon, just... Uh, you're going to the game? Yeah, I leave tonight at 9.15 if I can ever find my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, the emotions uh, uh, of coming off of that win against Ohio State, now uh, transitioning your mind to uh, the Big Ten Championship game, I think for these players that's a big deal and something they've got to – you can't look past Iowa for sure. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. not so at what all. are you thinking about right now as a former player – is you head to a Big Ten championship game. Well, you know what? I actually, I think the fan base, the former alums, the fan base, I think we're, I'm, I'm not nervous, but I would say as a whole, we're more nervous than the players are. One of the things that really struck, struck a chord with me that I got excited about is Blake Corm. As soon as the game was over against Ohio State, Blake Corm, running back, backup running back number two, 14.4 uh, yards of carry this past Saturday. He posted a video, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, the press conference when they were up two games to zip on the Celtics, and uh, the second time they played the Celtics, and they were up two games zip, and they were interviewing him, and Kobe was just very chill. And they said, Kobe, you, you, you look sad, you look angry, like, why aren't you happy? Why am I happy? The job's not done. We're only up 2-0, job's not done. There's a lot more out there for us. He posted that. 
Jim Harbaugh immediately talked about Iowa. Aiden mm -hmm. Hutchinson immediately mm -hmm. talked about Manifest Destiny. We belong uh, January 9th. They've all been talking about that. They acted like they didn't beat Ohio State. Hell, we were more sentimental oh, yeah. we about the Ohio State <laughs> win than they were. They were happy. They were excited. And I guarantee they moved past it immediately. And that's why I don't feel any type of way. And I know they're going to get the job done. Jared, your take on this one, just, to, you know, obviously that win over Ohio State was, I think, an iconic. I think that's the word to me. Maybe it was because of the snow. Maybe it was uh, because of how long it has been. But that was an iconic win in Michigan football history to get it done. Not much expected of the Wolverines this year. To go from that and now transition to this game against Iowa, when everybody's kind of placing you in the college football playoff, what, what's that transition like? I mean, it's big. I mean, but, you know, I agree with Braylon. Um, just listening, this, this team is different this year. You know, you listen to their, their mindset and the things that they talk about, I and mean, they're focused. You know, you look at uh, the Ohio State game and, you know, in the tradition of what that game means, it's never been about talent. It's about your will to win. And who wants it the most? And these guys, they obviously wanted it more, and, and it's about time. But, you know, going into this game, uh, you know, they know that Iowa is a, is a storybook program as well, and they're going to come out and they're going to be, they're going to want to punch you in the mouth. I mean, it's, it's going to be a physical game. Um, but I think these guys are, are, the mentality is that, look, we're not done yet. And so I think we're going to be okay, but it's, it's going to be a, a close game in the beginning. We'll get back into Iowa. I want to talk to you about something, and we've been talking. Devin came on yesterday, Devin Gardner. Brandy came on yesterday. Uh, good deal. Yeah, you know, Brand, everybody loves Brandy. Man. Uh -uh. So, uh, but I want to talk to you about something. The identity of Michigan, if you go back in terms of when you played, when I played, when my dad played, when Brandy played, the identity was the trenches. Yes. The identity was the big guys, the big uglies were going to dominate the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. And on the defensive line, they weren't going to let you go anywhere. And then we were going to run the ball. It's always been Michigan's identity. Always. Tell me, how good was it to see that identity come back in full fold? Oh, man, I was I wanted to jump out, out of, the, out of the, uh, the suite when I was watching the game. Because, I mean, just watching these guys get down and, you know, it's a physical game. And especially when it's it's a, a team that you hate so much. Man, tell I mean, me the, the, you know, that rivalry, I mean, that, you know, we hate them. They hate us. And to see, you know, especially all the stuff that was going on um, in the tunnel and, and so forth, I mean, it was the excitement. But to watch these guys pound Ohio State like that, I mean, it, it, it was a throwback game. Yeah. You know, that's what it felt like. And it just, and you're right, in the trenches, Michigan, that's where we, that's where we live, man. And that's where, that's where the grown men play, dude. Yeah, like people that don't understand uh, in terms of, because a lot of people will look at it and they'll say, oh, C.J. Stroud almost had 400 yards passing. The three wide receivers they got off. Travion Henderson had over 130 yards of total offense. They did that. But if you know the game, if you played the game, right. you could watch the trenches and you could see what the domination was. People are like, well, if they would have called a couple more plays, they could have won. You know, all that BS. No. no. Who says that? No. no. Well, no. Ohio <laughs> State. They're like, well, you know what? This is what Ohio State has been saying. Ryan Day outcoached himself. Like Ryan, Ryan Day outcoached himself from a win. No, what happened no, was no. they got dominated in the trenches. That's where they lost the game. Those guys didn't want to play anymore. Nope. They, they, and you know, and, and I, there's a couple plays. I wish we could go back and watch them and show them. There was a t couple times where I, you know, seeing guys in the trenches, they gave up. Mm -hmm. They took their will. I mean, that, and that's what it boils down to. And, and it, it, you, you, you mentioned that, Jared. I, I think that the the key point in that game was that second half possession that three and out on Ohio State, half, yes. and then all of a sudden uh, Michigan relatively uh, with ease came down and scored a touchdown that yes. to me said a lot don't Mass. forget holding them holding them to a field goal after the turnover, after the turnover yes. yeah. that was huge that, so, that turnover that's huge. that turnover was huge because as a defense and you know when you had that sudden change like mm. that and to come back and hold them like that, that gave so much confidence. And these guys, you can tell from day one, from the out onset of that game, they believed. Mm -hmm. It was no matter what was going to happen on that field, they felt that they were going to win this game. And it, and it showed. Talking to Jared Irons, former Michigan Wolverine, 93-96, to 96, and, of course, two-time captain. All-American. Uh, All-American as go. well, 95-96. and 96. And, and you guys, Jared and Braylon, you talk about what Michigan can do in the trenches, what Michigan can do up front. I look at that and I say, that gives them a chance to keep going here. That's how you beat Iowa. That's how you win that semifinal game. And heaven forbid 
that is exactly how you win a national championship because you can dominate up front. You can run the football. You can play defense. You can convert on third down when your quarterback has time to throw. Heaven forbid he doesn't even need to throw because you're <laughs> gashing him for six, seven yards of carry uh, on the ground. What does that my and again I don't want to look past Iowa but how do you think this team sets up uh, for a run at a national championship I, I think it, it's laid out perfectly to be honest with you not to not to look past Iowa but I mean if we take care of our business I mean it 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 it, it does set up that way to look that we could run it I yeah. mean and the the great thing about this team is that they're well balanced in so many areas mm-hmm. and you and eat and whoever we play they have to defend all of it Mm -hmm. you know and and the confidence that they have you know you know one thing about that last week i mean josh gaddis the way he called that game perfect perfect game oh my goodness perfect i mean it was just amazing watching Mm -hmm. how he played how he called that game how frustrating is it like i was frustrated (laughs) though watching that game almost not really but because you didn't see it all year yeah yeah, (laughs) i mean like if if you call if you did that at nebraska maybe michigan wouldn't have been trailing uh by three with five to play you know I, mean? yeah. I understand like like i mean right. you know tongue in cheek of course but, yeah, but you I look mean, at a season i mean it's it's about it's about momentum and it's about the ebb and flow of a season like you look at when they went to wisconsin and won that was a huge lift for them a, a huge confidence builder then come back the following week play you know i know i, I spent a lot of time in nebraska my older brother played in nebraska mm-hmm. for tom osborne so it's a tough place to play mm-hmm. i know they're not the same teams as those the back in the, in the past but that fan base I mean, they're like they they travel like Michigan. They 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 pack. They're very loud. To win that night game like that, that built more confidence. So it's just that momentum that these guys have yeah. continued to get better each week. And you know, like the way he called that game Saturday, mm-hmm. he couldn't have called it. Those those, those players weren't ready for that. Mm-hmm. Calling that calling a game like that in Wisconsin or Nebraska. You know, this week moving up, that's what that's what broke it down for him. That's a that's a heck. Of, uh, my apologies, uh, Mass. Don't. That, that's a heck of a point. Like each week for Michigan this year was a building point. It was a building. Mm-hmm. Point. It was a it was a monumental building point. Lincoln, Nebraska, in a night game. That's a, a tough, night game. That's Absolutely. a tough atmosphere. And if you don't, and, and if you want to talk about, oh well, it's just Nebraska. Pay attention to how Nebraska played Ohio State, yep. Michigan State, Penn State, and Michigan. They're a tough ball club. Penn State. Yes. Yep. Look at that win against okay. Penn State. I guess. Look at that win against Penn State. Every even the loss at Michigan State. What do we talk about that Monday? I said, you know what? I actually walked out of that game feeling better than I did walking into that game. <laughs> How they played against Michigan right. State. I actually Kate McNamara, 385, right. Andrew right. Anthony out of nowhere. I walked out of that game. I said, Michigan special. Look out. Yeah. Maz, I knew you know you had something for Jarrett. We'll get to that after the break. Also, Jim Harbaugh previews Iowa. Michigan going to honor the uh, high school in Oxford as well. Show you how they're going to do that. Lots to get to with one of the greatest names in oh. Michigan football. His irons. That's right. <laughs> Can you imagine Gus Johnson saying that now? Oh, irons oh, on the man. tackle. <laughs> Hermione and Edwards. Who's Sports Network? The bottom line. <laughs> Fellas, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Hey, everybody, it's Maz from MyBookie.ag, our studio sponsors, and the place I put my sports bets in, and you better get on it right now. If you're a first-timer and want to try sports betting out, try it at MyBookie.ag. Use that promo code Woodward. They will double your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Hey, what was that again? Beer man, 4-0 Thursday night football. He's done it again football. with his under last night yep. on the Thursday night game. And, of course, the Cowboys, they go to 9-4 and four now, 9-3. and three against the spread. So look out for the Cowboys going forward. It pays it, to listen. It does pay to listen. And Trevor don't forget, is back. you got the Pac-12 championship tonight. You got Utah and it's Oregon. A Who you like tonight in that game, you could bet it at mybookie.ag, Michigan, and Iowa tomorrow night for the Big Ten championship. The Lions looking for their first win against the Vikings. They lost by two the first time 
They're getting seven this time at home. Who are you going to bet? You bet it at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Woodward. Double your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. It's my bookie. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. If you have a gambling problem, please call the Michigan Gambling Hotline, 1 800 270 7117. Yeah, I would say um, Iowa, in all regards, um, run defense, pass defense, uh, where they tackle offensively, their execution, the way they block, the way they run, uh, the tremendous detail, attention to detail in special teams and as hard as they play. I mean, across the board, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all really, really good. Um, you know, this is a sound, tough, fundamentally good football team in, in every single regard, and, um, and that definitely is uh, daunting in itself. So that's Jim Harbaugh uh, talking about the Iowa Hawkeyes Big Ten Championship game in Indianapolis. I actually talked to a guy uh, from Visit Indy uh, today, a little bit, and he could neither confirm nor deny the fact that I uh, Ohio State fans have booked all the rooms yeah. <laughs> and will not relinquish them um, in lieu of Michigan fans getting them. There are no hotel rooms in the city of Indianapolis. But you know what that says? They bet on themselves before the game. They knew <laughs> that yes. they were going to right. they they were Michigan gonna was like, right. you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll wait right. till 4 o'clock Saturday. How else they booked those rooms? In, so in if August? you want to make a last-minute trip to Indianapolis, uh, either tonight or tomorrow, you're, sleeping in your car. you're going to either have to sleep in your car or sleep uh, somewhere about an hour or so outside the of the stadium. Just That's do the mad. round trip. You are that is mad. That's yeah, what he says to me. Anymore like that. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> let's go to the game. He says, "Let's go to the game, and then we'll drive home after the game." I said, "Are you crazy?" My younger self, no, not 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 now. Yeah. <laughs> and we got the Lions on Sunday. The Lions <laughs> on Sunday. I say, bring it, man. What a, what a daily double. That you is. are a madman. Hey, uh, Maz, yeah. you had something for Jared, though. Hey, we just heard Jim Harbaugh coming back in, Jared, and uh, obviously seven years it's taken. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism of him. He's had to change his ways. He went out and hired a guy like Mike McDonald, you know, younger staff. He changed his ways. I want to ask you, because I know my boys, I know their answer. Do you forgive Jim Harbaugh for the first 6.35 <laughs> years that he's been here because of this win? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know what? Uh, you know, those are tough years, man. Trust me. Those were... Those are tough ones. They got man. me in trouble. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah. They were, <laughs> got me yeah. I mean, and, and Braylon was, you know, could say a little bit more things than I could say because I, you know, I hold it Apparently in. Apparently not because yeah. I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we can laugh about it. Now. Yeah, we now can we laugh can about it. Now. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's look. I, I'm I'm all about moving forward. Um, and especially after a, a pounding that they gave those boys on Saturday, I'm 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 ready. I'm ready to move on. I think that's what we. That's what I said too. I mean, but it, but I still I, remember. I mean, I, yeah. you know, it, it was very painful. There was sure. a lot of embarrassment. I mean, when they laid sixty on Michigan, you could say the same thing you just said about Ohio State. You said they kind of laid down. They didn't want a piece I, of it. The Michigan players didn't look like they wanted a piece of it when they put sixty up. Well, against listen, them. listen. But my the, this is this is what I this is how I look at it. You know, so. Um, my wife's seven years younger than me, so we've been together. Mine too. Yeah, so we've been together probably you know you know ten uh, twelve years or so, and been married. Get it right. Married. She's I watching. know. I, I need to be, and, yeah. and been married nine years. Get it right. <laughs> what hurts me is that you know we'll be talking to people. People come up to me like you know remember my days at Michigan and those years of being Ohio State and so forth. And my wife will say, well, you know, everybody talks about Jared and all the good days. I mean, all the good years at Michigan and how good Michigan has been. Ever since I've known him, Michigan's never been good. Right. Yep. And I mean, it pierces me to hear that. Yeah. I mean, it Ooh. it really upsets me. I'm like, what? And I she's mean, that's not very, lying. And she's not lying. I yeah. can't argue it. You know. And you I know, think that, Jared, when you were just quickly, I'm sorry, Braylon, <laughs> when you were in uh, Ann Arbor and a little bit before and a little bit after, you were in the middle of a 10 year of a 12 year run where Michigan beat Ohio State 10 out of 12. Yes. Yeah. I tell people all the. I have a ton of Ohio State. You know. 
friends and so forth, their vans or whatever, and they tried throwing in my face. I said, look, I played during the Cooper years. Like, it's, <laughs> like what you guys are witnessing, God, I, I felt 12. this. I know what this feels like. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the thing about in terms of forgiveness is if Jim Harbaugh would have won his way, his original way. Like if finally he would have got that win this year, I his agree. original way, I wouldn't have forgiven him. Yes. I'd be like, you know what? It's about goddamn time. Yes. But the fact that he was able to change himself, reinvent himself, listen to people point. around That's him, a listen, point. hire young individuals to say, you know what? I don't know it all. Hey, come help me win this championship. Yes. Hey, Mike Hart, come help me. Hey, Ron Bellamy, I know you don't have any college experience, but I know you know your stuff. Yes. West Bloomfield. The yes. fact that he did it that way, all is forgiven with me. Because I, if you totally look agree. at that, if you look at life that way, when you can stand in front of the mirror and say, I have to change, that speaks to character as well. That speaks to something that a lot of people can kind of gravitate to. That By the time you're 25, you are who you're going to be in yeah, life. Yeah. You are who you are going to be in life. To change who you are at 50 plus that's tough. But he had, but you know, there were factors that made him change. It wasn't just the, the losing and so forth. I mean, for him to take a pay cut. That's mm -hmm. a, it's not about the money. It's mm -hmm. more about the ego. Like, you have to, when you had to take a cut like mm -hmm. that, you realize, all right, I haven't been getting it done. And it kind of opens it up yeah. for you to nationally. Kinda, yeah, and it, and it humbles you. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so he knew he had to change. He knew he had to, and, and I'm going to be honest, I've known Jim for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for him to make the changes that he has made, I, I mean, you know, Jim, you know, five years ago or the Jim 10 years ago, I don't think he could have made that change. The word stubborn, uh, Braylon and I <laughs> uh, mentioned along with yeah. uh, Jim Harbaugh's name. That comes, that word has come up before. He even changed his pants. That is so. He changed his pants color a couple times this year. <laughs> <laughs> the is he wore the dark blue. You know, he wore but the you know what it is? It's like in, in, with coaches and guys that have had success, you, you know, you get caught up in that moment where you think it's about you and it's about your way. I mean, to be able to delegate and, and open up and say, Look, I might my way might not be the best way. It's humbling, you know. I want to I want to change gears with you real quick for two seconds. Your youngest brother, mm -hmm. Grant. Yes. University of Notre Dame. Talked to him today, actually. University <laughs> of Notre Dame. I remember the whole when they were recruiting. Yeah. Michigan was very upset that they didn't get Grant. Grant mm -hmm. went to Notre Dame. You know, Woodson didn't do a good job of hosting him. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about Woodson too. We could talk about that too. But talking about Notre Dame, let's switch and talk about Notre Dame for a second. You see an individual like Brian Kelly, how he just up and left. Yes. Like when you were there, Gary Moeller left, but Gary Moeller didn't up and leave. He left because he got forced out, yes. and they brought in Lloyd. Talk about individuals just leaving institutions today. Like talk about the kids and how they feel. How would you feel if Lloyd would have just left you? Yeah, that'd have been tough. I mean, you know, it's 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 a different world we live in now because of you know, you know, with this old NIL and 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 how these coaches are making the money they're making. Mm -hmm. So you know, I that you know that that Kelly move is 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 one that. You know, it opens your eyes, man, because, you know, that's the Notre Dame's a story big program. He was making $7 million a year. I mean, I know growing up down south, uh, you know, what that place means and what LSU is going to do and the money he's making. But, I mean, I, I don't know if I would have made that move. You know what I mean? But it's – I agree, like, when these guys get up and leave and, and be able to leave, it's, it's kind of changed the way college football it, it yeah. runs now. You know, Without and it, question. It, it, it's, it's like a wild, wild west. You know, I mean, and it also, you know, I think it, it, it changed. It's better for, for us former players or the players now because it puts them on a level, a, a, a better level playing field with these coaches to where, you know what, you can't just weed me out. I can go somewhere else, you know, and, you know, you got to you got to make sure that that I'm taken care of. So. You know, I you know it's it right now it's crazy in college football, man. Jay, I agree with you one hundred percent. What I would say it does is it forces kids to now be selfish. At eighteen years old, I'm selfish. When I come into an institution, I understand that my coach may not be there for four years. Hell, he may not be there for two years. Yes. So when I go in, see, when we were younger, or when we were in school. We were going for the program. We were going to mm -hmm. immerse ourselves into the tradition that was Michigan. I was going to sing the victors. Mm -hmm. I was yes, going yes. to play Ohio State. Yes. I was going to be a part of a brotherhood. I was going to be coached by Lloyd Carr, mm -hmm. who was on the right. staff with Bo Schembechler. I yes. was excited to be with my brothers in four years, five years. Now, the way in which coaches can up and leave, like Brian Kelly and Lincoln Riley, and hell, I get it. I, especially Lincoln Riley, I get it. Yeah. But now I'm like, you know what? I appreciate y'all, y'all my brothers and all that, but I'm coming to get paid. 
Like I'm coming well, to get paid, guys, and that's yeah, going to be these guys' mindset. Well, think about these guys not playing in the bowl games. Yeah, I mean, back yeah. when we played, that was no one would ever think to do that. Hell no. And, and but I see why they do. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I I, and I don't blame them. If you're not, if you're not in the way that's set up, if you're not in the championship, you know, or Lincoln, in, in, in the in the playoffs, then why would you play in that game if you if you have a shot? Lincoln Riley Absolutely. and Brian Kelly just validated all the guys that don't play. They validated. Oh yeah. One hundred thousand percent. That is true. And Braylon, you had said, you know, when a kid can commits to a school, they do so with no guarantee that that coach will be there for the entire four know. years. With the way college football is set up now with transfer portal, they commit to a school not knowing if they, they are gonna be will be there, there yeah. for four years yeah. or not. Uh, Michigan is going to make a, a great gesture to the Oxford High School program. And I just want to get your guys' take on that. Do we have you for one more segment? Yeah, whatever uh, you guys Great. Um, that. We'll you know. talk about that next and what Jim Harbaugh did uh, as well in regards to that. I uh, got confirmation on this this morning. We'll have that for you next. Germani and Edwards. Google Sports Network, home. Home of Jared Irons. <laughs> I, do feel at home. I do feel at home yeah. here. There we go. Tony is a third generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust resistant and made for all weather use. And the double roll lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. And a miraculous catch! Follow us everywhere. Just search Woodward Sports on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, IG, and more. More, 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 more. It's uh, I mean, you gotta think about when what's the name was there. Uh, guys, welcome back. Woodward Sports Network, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Jarrett Irons, former two-time uh, captain of the Michigan Wolverines, 95-96. Uh, before I get to my next set, I got to ask you. It, it's it's it, You leave in 96, they win the national championship in 97. Are you like, oh, my God? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's funny. People ask me that all the time. No, I, you know, and, and I'm so close to those guys. And, you know, we all talk about it. They know that we were the ones that got set them. Set it to up. The, that we set yep. it up for them. And, and you know what? What's been great about it all these years, they all make me feel, because I was their captain during that sure. time. So, you know, I felt like that was that was my championship as well, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, that's when, the, you know, we, we, we haze those guys to get him to that point. <laughs> hey, Jerry, since, since we're going this route, because yeah. I, I had a question I was going to ask later, but since we're already here, it's perfect timing. Jerry, talk about number two. Uh, when he first got there, what did you see? Did you see that he was going to be a transcendent player in college football and the NFL as well? You knew he was different. You knew he was different. Talk about Charles Woods. Yeah, you knew he was different. I, I have a really strong relationship with Charles. You know, his mom and my parents. My parents. I know I'm from Texas. They would we, we would all they would always sit together uh, for the games and kind of took him under my wing. And you know, um, but you knew when he got on campus, he was different. I mean, you know, there were some of the you know some of the guys that were playing that were playing corner. We'd be in practice. We we're like, man, this kid is just he's just so athletic and yeah. just raw. And just, I mean, and, and had the confidence that didn't care. He didn't care he was a freshman, and you knew he was going to be great. He had two interceptions his freshman year against Ohio State. Like, people talk about, well, you didn't know that he was going to be a Heisman Trophy, blah, blah. No, you didn't know he was going to be a Heisman Trophy, but you knew he was going to be special. You knew he was going to be special. Two interceptions against Ohio State as a freshman, mm-hmm. people don't do that. Well, you know, I mean, he and I used to talk, out, you know, after practice or, you know, just hanging out. And, and, you know, he's one of those guys, he's a student of the game. And he he listens. He's he's a very observant uh, person, and you could tell he takes a little bit from everyone. And for him to be a freshman in a in a in, in a you know veteran senior led defense uh, and and play the way he did, I mean, he the mo- no moment has ever been too big for him. And that's that's mm. the best way I can put it to you. Nice uh, guys, the Michigan Wolverines are going to be wearing a patch uh, in their game on their shoulder. Uh, there it is right there if you're watching on YouTube. It is a block O uh, with the initials TM. That's for Tate Mirror and his number 42. He was a football player, standout football player at Oxford. Also four blue hearts uh, denoting the lives lost in that school shooting. Tate Mirror, Justin Schilling, Hannah St. Juliana, and Madison Baldwin. 
uh, lives cut short way, way too soon, unnecessary, and probably 100% preventable. Uh, but the University of Michigan is is striking, um, I think, the right, uh, you know, you want to do something. Jim Harbaugh reached out to the head football coach, uh, I was told this morning, uh, by somebody in the Michigan Athletic Department, and he got that coach's blessing, and the coach absolutely loved that Michigan was doing this. And I just think, like, those moments, uh, you kind of, you know, we always talk about football and games, but those moments are the humanized connection to sports that, that really touch people. just want your take on that. No, I, I agree. I mean, it just goes to show that, you know, sports, you know, it's, it, you know, it's bigger than it's, it touches so many, to me, um, so many hearts. And, and I'm so glad that, that Jim and, and the team, they're doing this. Um, and, and I guarantee you, those guys are going to go out there. They're going to, they're going to represent the state of Michigan mm-hmm. and they feel the pain of the, those families. And, and they're, uh, they're going to go out there and show and, and, and play for those guys you want to give credit to michigan state first michigan state did uh you know what they're doing michigan state has something planned for uh for the young individual that gave his life they have something planned for him so you want to give them some credit first michigan you gotta love this you gotta love the best you gotta love that they took it upon themselves and not only did they honor him they honored the other fallen individuals by the four Mm -hmm. hearts that's a great that's a great thing they're doing Mm -hmm. and it talk you talked about it and mass talks about this all the time well, not all the time, but when we talk about it, sport is transcendent when it comes to like life and mm-hmm. humanity. Because think about this. 9-11 happens, correct? The mm-hmm. great unifier. And when, yep. when 9-11 happens, it destroyed this country. It rocked us to our core. And it, it brought us the closest probably that we've ever been. Ever. We needed sports at that we time. We did. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Yep. What is the first thing that really, 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 really you can wrap your arms around mm-hmm. and hold yourself together? Maz, you tell me. George Bush. And then, ceremonial and, pitch. Yep. Dog, uh, when George Bush delivers the infamous pitch, it was re- it, yeah. it brought us back together. Mm-hmm. Sport does that, man, and that's why sports is important. I encourage every individual, every father, every mother, make your sons, make your daughters, yes. make them play sports. Mm-hmm. Make them play get sports. Get them so involved. They, yeah, exactly. Involved. It could be whatever sport. Yeah. It's a team. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, some version of a team sport at some point in their lives. Make, make them feel connected yeah. to something. Maybe there yeah, won't be right? so many loners out there. If you have a team, you always have – your team always has your back, whether you're on the bench or whether you're the first team. Or, like, Lloyd Carr. Lloyd Carr. I know you know him well. I know him well. One of the biggest things that stick with me, and as soon as I say it, you're gonna, I know, I, I, you I know, know, I know, you know exactly, exactly, I know exactly what you're about to say. You know say. what? Know. What is one of his biggest phrases? Yeah, no one's bigger than the team. No, no one is bigger than the team. Give yourself to something greater than yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Lloyd Carr. Sports is the equalizer. I can go to any city, yep. anywhere, and if I go up to the bar or sit at a restaurant table, uh, there's a sports on. I feel like I'm home. It doesn't matter where I'm at, I'm home. And I talk to other people, and it just brings you all together. Because it takes you away from the bad things that happen uh, outside, our, outside that TV that time or when you go to a game. There's nothing like it. You know, I went to the Michigan-Michigan State game. I, just, I went in the stadium by myself. And I sit in East Lansing with all these Spartan fans. I'm a Michigan fan. Do you have a ticket mask? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I got in the stadium, and I'm sitting in there. And uh, I'm sitting with all these East Lansing, all these great people that love their green Were and white. Were you illegal? And deep, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so I'm sitting in there, and my heart is like, come on, Michigan. I, and I'm not rooting. Out, outlandish. I had a great time. and these, the, I had a great time. But it, I sat in the Cleveland dog pound. With New York Jets Jet Jet here on. Wow. Okay. I had a great uh, get, time. And you get pounded for you get that. Pounded. <laughs> I, had stickers, I had stickers all over me, orange stickers. I didn't care. In other words, this, it, sports is the great equalizer. Yeah. I love sports. Totally I was agree. in a, um, <laughs> God, I don't remember what year it was. Had it, oh, 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 08, oh, 09, 10. One of, those, one of those years, the Tigers are playing in L.A., uh, go to Dodger Stadium with my Chet Lemon jersey on. I own one jersey. <laughs> Chet Lemon. I, I own wow. one, one jersey. Chet wow. Lemon was my guy, man. Wow. I love Chet Lemon growing up. So I have a Chet Lemon jersey. I wore that to Dodger Stadium to see the Tigers play the Dodgers. And the guy, uh, he, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not even going to describe. Uh, but he said, ASA. <laughs> He says, he says, let me do you a favor, man. 
Before you get to that parking lot, I take the jersey off. Okay? <laughs> He's like, take the jersey off. And I was like, before he said, J-, I was like. <laughs> he was doing you a solid. I tell you yeah. that. Yeah. He was doing me a favor. But you talk about sports is oh, the yeah. great equalizer. I mean, uh, there was also a jail at the bottom of Veterans <laughs> Stadium. Right. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. For a reason. Uh, guys, we're going to take a break. Uh, uh, Jarrett, if you could stay. Well, I want to talk Notre Dame with you. Yes. What a reaction to the new head coach oh, from the players. You'll see that next. Marcus Freeman going to be introduced. Uh, you're, like you said, your brother played at Notre Dame. Brian Kelly leaves Marcus Freeman in 35 years old, the CEO of Notre Dame football. Uh, get Jared Irons' take on that. Braylon's as well. And we'll even uh, give you a little side of Tom Massaway. Uh, Armani and Edwards. <laughs> what was Sports Network? The bottom line, baby. So, so wait, dude. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. One mortgage myth we hear all the time is having to choose between a 15 or a 30 year fixed term. At Hall Financial, we offer the modern mortgage to create a flexible term that fits your unique financial situation. Our team of mortgage experts are available seven days a week to review your goals and customize a solution for you. Get started today with a free five minute mortgage review at 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us online at callhallfirst.com. Sports. This part of the show today, watch again on YouTube or download the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hey, gang, it's Maz for the Folding Warehouse in Hamtramck, your great hosts, Chris and Noni Hut. Make sure you tell them Maz and the, and the peeps at Woodward Sports Center. We had our holiday party there on Tuesday night. It was fantastic. My boys, Ryan and Braylon, brought home the trophy. What is folding? It's throwing a football at bowling pins. You can't get more fun than that. Not only that, you can have a corporate party, team building event, or you can go on your own. Two ways to play, $10 unlimited play or private lane reservation, 120 bucks for two hours you can fit 10 people on a lane it's fun they over have 100 beers two dollar mystery beer machine as well my man braylon pulled a colt 45 out of it multiple full bars as well Come you on. bring the food or have it delivered we had happy's pizza and we couldn't be happier and wings get come get your full on go see him tell him woodward sports sent you at the folding warehouse.com extremely proud you guys on your focus and your ability to lock in all week long this week, okay? It was awesome to see, awesome to be a part of. It shows who you are, your DNA, your mental toughness, your physical toughness, the way you compete, the way you care about each other, okay? That's what this team run is gonna be about. Competing, getting after it with mental and physical toughness, and being the best in the country in what we do. So are we ready to do that? Yes, sir. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, okay, because you're brand new, Head football coach! Well, they certainly love it. Armani and Edwards, the bottom line, Woodward Sports Network, Jared Irons, former two-time captain of the Michigan Wolverines in 95 and 96, uh, sitting with us here talking Michigan uh, and Iowa, but we are talking about the Irish right now. Marcus Freeman, 35 years old, uh, the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame, gets elevated to take that position. Braylon, uh, good for Marcus uh, uh, Freeman. That's one, God bless him. Yeah, man. Uh, the reaction was great. Man. But Brady Quinn said it. Yes, he did. To be the head football coach at Notre Dame, Three you letters. are the CEO, where you go and you pretty much ask for money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You yes. keep donors and boosters happy. You win games. You stay out of the way of your coordinators, and and uh, you move on. Is this kid, and I call him a kid because he's younger than me, Although I'm 16 at heart. Um, <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yes. Yes, Is we this guy prepared to be the head coach at Notre Dame? Opa, I saw that. So this is my thought process. He obviously knows what he's doing because Brian Kelly is not an idiot. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I mean, he, the way he handled the situation, I love, but he's not an idiot. He hired Marcus Freeman as a defensive coordinator for a reason. He knows his football. He knows his stuff. Without question. You don't get hired by Brian Kelly at Notre Dame if you don't know your stuff. So starting there, he knows his stuff. That's fine. 35. 
CEO yes, that's what of good. Notre Dame. I don't I don't know if he's ready for that job. Notre Dame is a different type of beast. Notre Dame, if you want to be honest, and this is tough to you, you see this, it's tough for me to admit this. Notre Dame's probably the most story school in college football history in terms of story. Michigan won two. We are the I, I winners say, for would, a cup of ball. I, 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 I would say Mich <laughs> okay, Michigan, Notre Dame. But Michigan ain't got no movie. Notre Dame's got a couple movies. So like it so Michigan to Notre Dame for the sake of this argument for Jerry with my butt. So I know, you know, I cannot stand the, the, the I hate <laughs> I hate Notre Dame, but Notre Dame's got like thirteen Rudy, So Rudy, oh, man, I hate Rudy Rudy Green. He didn't even do that in real life, but whatever. So it's a different beast to be the CEO, to raise money, to be a fundraiser. You're not just a coach trying to win games. You're not just a coach trying to go in living rooms and recruit. You're doing a whole nother beast. It's a whole nother thing. At 35, I mean, I'm 38. So three years ago, I couldn't be the coach. I can't be the coach now. I couldn't be the coach of Notre Dame. Now, he could be the coach of Texas A&M. Not that bad. He could be the coach of Hell, Florida. He could be the coach of some other, some big schools. Notre Dame is a different type of beast, especially, Jared, for your first job, for your first head coaching job, Notre Dame, that's a tough one, especially if you add – yeah, you know, I, listen, you know, I know that program very well, uh, having a younger brother play there. He Shout was out a, to Grant Irons. Yeah, Grant Irons. And, you know, you know, I was a two-time captain in Michigan. He was a two-time captain in Notre Dame, so he had a great career there. Um, I, I just want to go out on the record and just say that I cannot stand that program. When Lou Holtz <laughs> recruited me, you know, I, we got recruited by all these different, you know, schools, but I was never going to Notre Dame. I couldn't stand that place. But anyways, I know my it was good for my brother, and obviously I'm happy for, for him getting this, this coaching job, but that's – I agree with you, Braylon um, – that is a that's a tough job. It's not it's not the 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 CEO part of it, which is going to be hard. You know, you can learn that. You know, you, you he can get the where where I worry about him is when he starts losing, or if he has if it's, if it gets to a point where they start losing and, and that pressure is on him. That that alumni base, they are going to turn. Tyrone Willingham. Yes, and they are going to. Especially, I mean, it's it's a tough. That's a tough play. That's going to be a, a stress cooker, especially your first head coaching job. Mm -hmm. I was going to bring up Ty Willingham, but you guys could talk about that. What I want to bring up is that Notre Dame team, it didn't look like they were going to miss a Brian Kelly. It looks like they're ready to run through a wall. I'm going to say this. I'm rooting for them to not back into the playoff, but now the sports side of me is like, I would not mind seeing them go, get in the playoff, and, and maybe make a I'm not going to go run. that far. <laughs> I, I, just, I, you know, I, I don't like it. I don't like them because I wanted to choose – Aside, mm -hmm. I don't like this independent crap. Pick your, pick your team, pick your. We conference. don't think they should be allowed right. to be sitting home this just, week and back while in. everybody else is playing a conference well, championship game. Well, that, that's on, but that's on them. That's yeah. the arrogance of them, right. and, yeah. and and that's that's they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and them thinking that they're the elitist, and they, you know, look both both our programs are very similar. You know, you know, that's people, why we don't like each other. Yeah, that's why you know mm -hmm. a lot of people don't. You know, and it's funny. You know, they just have religion. That's the other yeah, side. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they, you know, but it's it's one of those things that you know they could have joined. The Big Ten, they could have joined any other any other conferences they wanted to. So they think that they're too good for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they need to sit at home. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say is, in terms of the coach, this is how, and I don't want to discredit how the players feel about Marcus Freeman and how they reacted. This is what any players, this is what any team would have done if they got abandoned by their head man. Any team would have done. Look that. what Michigan well, State like, did with Bobby hold Williams. Hold on, any team would have done that in terms of the reaction. Like I'm not disrespecting Marcus Freeman. Any team would have reacted that way. If Lloyd Carr would have left when I was there, and then they would have elected Jim Herman, who I ah, but yeah. I still would. Not, not <laughs> but I still would have been like, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Jim. We got Jim. <laughs> right. Yeah, because well, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, we well, got a reason why they're they're so excited is because you bring a new coach that doesn't know these players. Energy. The, you know, he comes in. He's gonna bring his own guys bring new coaches and you got to build new relationships you know keeping him there these guys he already knows these players so these that of course they're going to embrace that the second thing i was going to say in terms of what you talked about in terms of they feel like they're arrogant they feel like they're too good yes i mean they say that about us so no, I mean, no 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 I'm, I'm talking about terms no they're not joining oh, yeah. a conference yeah you're 100 right but they have every right to be that way with the exception of this year now you look at their schedule this year and you're like ah look at this schedule blah 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 if you go out through the history, when you were in school, when I was in school, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, nobody wanted Notre Dame's schedule. You know why? We talked about this yesterday. USC is on that schedule mm -hmm. every year when they were good. Every year. Navy played them teeth, tooth and nail. Who else was on that schedule? 
Purdue. This team. Yeah. This, team. this yeah. team. Who yeah. else was on that team? MSU. MSU. Stanford. Who, who, Stanford. Yeah. Like, they had the hardest schedule. Mm-hmm. Like, it's tough. Everybody, when you put, and Brady Quinn said this, so I'm not, I don't want to steal his take. When you put Notre Dame on a schedule, it means something. They're like, oh, we got Notre Dame. It makes your schedule tougher. Mm-hmm. If you put them in a conference, and I said this yesterday, Jared, look at Penn State. Penn State was a powerhouse when they were by themselves. Won a national championship, 93 or 94. Won a national championship, powerhouse. They put them in the Big Ten. Put them in the Big Ten. They had to play Michigan, ass whooping. Yep. They had to play Ohio State, ass whooping. They yep. had to play Michigan State every other year, butt whooping. It's tough. Penn State's brand has been watered down. And not even because of the stuff that happened uh, mm-hmm. with you know who. Not even because of whatever. It got watered down because it got in the conference and he had to play the big boys. Well, that's the big why, dog. I, I that that's why Notre Dame won't do yeah, it. It's but, smart. Yeah, but I, I say that about you know everybody talks about the SEC and all this and that. You know if you if you take an SEC team and put them in the Big Ten and let them play every week again that pounding. They're not going to be the same type of team. I agree. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Even when the SEC team, and, and I think, I want to say it was Maz or Ryan and said with this, the weather and all that. Even when they play us, where do they play us at? Yes. <laughs> they ain't, they they're not coming here. They ain't coming, no, they they ain't they ain't coming want no to Columbus. Right. No, no, no. They ain't coming to Ann Arbor. Neutral no. site. They ain't coming yes. to Happy Valley. Yes. Yes. They ain't yes. coming yes. to Dallas. Yes. Yes. They ain't exactly. coming to Happy Valley right. for one of them White House or Kinnick Stadium. No, no. We'll play you in Dallas. Yes. No, we'll play you in Georgia. Notre Dame beat Wisconsin at Soldier Field. Guys, maybe this is a bigger, bigger topic than the three minutes I ha- I, I have left in in this segment. But and if I don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to tell me to sh- shut my bleeping mouth. But this, we met Marcus Freeman is an African American. Just have we gotten? You know, Ty Willingham had had a lot to say about the culture of Notre Dame and, and just kind of where that was when he was the head coach. Have we gotten to a point? Where this you don't even bring this up anymore. Uh, I I guess I, I guess I'm mumbling already, so I'll start. I say no, mm-hmm. and and I wasn't gonna bring this up because I don't want to ever go to race. And we got a great show, we got a great fan base. But since you brought it up, I don't, I don't, we can yeah, have. A, I, I think yeah. it's worth having an yeah, yeah. intelligent I don't, I don't conversation know what you're gonna about say. it. Let's, let's have an intelligent you're, conversation. You're not gonna mention Mel Tucker. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm gonna say. I'm not. No, I'm not even going there at all. <laughs> Notre Dame is not the job for a black man. Notre Dame is not the job for a black man. South Bend, Indiana, the way in which that alumni base is, the way in which they are. And you saw what they did in Tyron Willingham. And, yes, that was 20 years ago. That's still who Notre Dame is today. And I, I'm telling you, I wish him the best. We always support each other. We always do. I, that is a tough hire in terms of being a black man and Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a tough place. I legitimately got called the N-word playing at Notre Dame when I was playing there. And he, that ain't but 20 years ago. It's still going to that's a tough hire. I, I wish him well. It's going to be a tough hire. But at the same time, you have to have things to have progress in life. So maybe Marcus Freeman could be the guy. Create that change. Yeah. Me- yeah. Exactly, right. Mm-hmm. So I'm wishing him well. Maybe he can mm-hmm. be the guy that creates change. I myself, I think it's tough. And if I'm off base it's, to bring it up, no, hell feel no. free to tell hell, me. Hell no. Hell you know no. what I mean? It's not a tough job if he's winning. Right. You know, if he, winning cures all. So, I mean, if they, if they they ball out and they win, they'll love them. True, but, you know, when you lose, like, the, like when you lose, but the difference is when you're losing and you're black at Notre Dame, you're out faster. Like, there's a lot of coaches that say, look, Charlie yeah, White's but, lost but, a lot. But, but I will say this. I mean, you know, and when, you know, Willingham was there, I mean, it's, it, you know, 20 years ago and so forth. He went 10 and 2 yeah, his yeah, second yeah, year and but, got fired but his you, third but, year. But you got to also take in context the, the, the environment in which we live in now. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot has changed. I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's equal, but it's, it's that race, you know, uh, conversation is a lot different now than it was when Tyrone was coaching. And that's there. a good thing. Yeah, and it's a great thing. No, <laughs> it's, a, it, thing. It's, a, it's a great it's thing. It's progress. No, it's, right? probably, it's I mean, progress. So, I, so you know, there's a lot that's gone on and, and um, you know, just socially. So, uh, you know, I wish him the best even though I, I can't stand that program. I know my brother's happy about it. Um, I love that you hate Notre Dame. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I, 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 no, I mean, there's no I, even... I, like, I, yeah, my, it's not, my kids can never go there. Uh, that yeah. Ohio State, Michigan State, they can't go, but Notre Dame, I can't I was going to say, Ray, Rank your hate. Ah, oh, man, it's tough, man. Give oh. me your hate three. You know what's funny? Ohio State, Michigan State. Uh, in, uh, Ohio State and Notre Dame are, are they're right. They're about one and one. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's tough, man. 
I don't know, man. I hate them both, man. And, and Michigan State, of course, but Ohio State <laughs> and Notre Dame, I can't stand. I hate Notre Dame the most. Like I, I can't stand them. I got one friend from Notre Dame. That's it, and that's and that's Justin Tucker. Shout out to the G. Oh wow! Yeah. Shout out to G. I love Justin. Yeah, Tucker. Yeah, he's a good dude. Man. Mate, uh, Justin Tucker is uh, yeah, amazing. He's, he's about dude. as good as they come. Yeah. Outside of that, I can't stand anybody. Well, yeah. I take that back. How the hell am I going to say that? I, that's why I said, uh, "How the hell am I going to say that?" <laughs> Brady's a good dude. Bro. Brady's my guy. I hate Notre Dame. I don't even respect Notre Dame. Like that's know. how hard. That's how much I hate them. I don't now know. Ohio State, I hate them, but I respect them. Like I, I respect, I, he, he, I respect them. I, Michigan State, I'm just starting to now hate more. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, I, those we are hate the, their fans because I hate Alex <laughs> Merritt. <laughs> hey, so, but, except that, my, 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 I, I, I would hate say my too. hatred I'm for joking, those, those two, Smith. you know, for Ohio State, Michigan, and, uh, Notre Dame is very strong. But I love playing against those guys, uh-huh. and I love playing them there. Like playing them, like when touchdown Jesus, like you know, playing in that state, I used to love playing there and beating them. And then you know, you know, in the horseshoe, I mean, there's you know, it's great. I mean, yeah. I love that place. So mm-hmm. you know, those those are I mean, that hatred is good because you can do something about it because you can play. Yeah, you know, and control that that narrative. So it's good. Did so I ever you, tell you my Notre Dame story? You did. I got I got the, all, the admissions. I, I, yeah, well, well, yeah, I got off. I got. Did all you get recruited? And, you got recruited. No, no, no. no, no, no this is just purely for the school. I go on a college visit. I got all four points in in, uh, in high school. Uh, great test scores. Good good uh, good test scores. Not great test scores. Good test scores. Football captain of football. Captain of baseball. Great action. Never great came coach. out the game. Never came out of the game. National Honor Society. They tell me don't waste fifty bucks on the application. You're never getting in. Oh. And I was like, wow, well, mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so ever since then, I have hated. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, hey, we're together. We're together. <laughs> No, yeah. But they did recruit me. I'm yeah. sorry. Hey. Don't waste fifty bucks on the application, which I should have. T- I didn't waste fifty bucks on the application. Embrace so. the hate. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. Uh, any final thoughts there, uh, Jared? Hey, listen. Uh, thanks for having me. I love. I love you guys, and it's been fun. It's been a blast, and let's uh, let's get a great win on Saturday. Give what? us a score. You know, I agree with you. It's probably going to be 28 to 10. 20, it feels like a 28 to 10 game. It does. Like, it does. Like, it does. Like, like a slow start. It's going to be a slow start. It, yeah, yeah, it's going to be slow. Okay, gonna... so I'm going to say two things Here before we go. you leave. <laughs> One, because we'll get into this after it gets uh, out. It, it's not going to be 28 to 10. Like we've been waiting all year. Josh Gad Josh Gad is Josh Gad has saved his offense all year. He didn't show his hand. He didn't show his tail until the house taken. They are about to beat the you know what out of Iowa. Second thing I will say, I watched the play and I told him this on the phone. I watched Josh Ross, who's the middle linebacker, oh, Mike linebacker beast. for Michigan right now, number twelve. There was a play. Mamayan Williams, who's the bowling ball. For Ohio State Buckeyes. He's the bowling ball back. So they bring him in when they want the heavy yards, yep. when they want the tough yards. He stepped into the hole. There was a hole there. There were two individuals in the hole. It was a hallway. There was Josh Ross. There was Mayan Williams. Josh Ross hit him so hard under the chin. I said, you know what? God damn it if that ain't Jared. I ain't. <laughs> damn it if that ain't Jared. I, 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 I was envious of these guys. I wish I could have played in that game. I was jumping on my seat. Jared, let's do this again soon, okay? Oh, this anytime. is a lot of fun, man. Anytime this is a lot I, of fun. Hey, I live here, so hey, anytime you guys want me, I'll We'll come. have you back for the playoff. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. I like the way you think. <laughs> National uh, Championship. All right, guys, we're going to take a break. Come right back. Uh, top of the hour, Jay Feely will join us. Sermani and Edwards. Global Sports Network, the bottom line. It's that time of the year again. Time for our second annual Stuff a Studio with Woodward Sports. Last year, Metro Detroit came together to help make the largest single toy donation in Mott Children's Hospital history. This year, we make it even bigger. Stuff a Studio is happening December 13th through the 17th at the Woodward Sports Studios in Birmingham. The children in Mott Children's Hospital fight so hard all year. Now it's up to all of us to help bring a smile to their faces. So while you're out holiday shopping, make sure you pick up an extra toy or two and help us spread some love to Metro Detroit this season. We look forward to seeing you December 13th through the 17th as we stuff our studio with Woodward Sports and Meyer. Woodward Sports Network, let's go! <laughs> the pros know. Go! Listen Monday through Friday for Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network with Stanley Cup champ Darren McCarty, former Lion Joyke Bell, and the silky voice of Neil Rule. Hey, gang, I want to tell you about Lady Jane's haircuts for a minute. I've got a view right now to a gentleman getting a hot lather neck shave and a shampoo. Ooh-wee, that young man feeling real good right now. Who wouldn't want that? 
getting ready to start their weekend. That's what happens here at Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. All you got to do, you walk in, you sign in, you sit down, and before you know it, you are handsome and clean. You guys ready for it? Come on, fish, ready? <coughs> yes, sir. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open 10 to 8, seven days a week. It's Wicked, wicked awesome. awesome. In life, you are only going to be as good as your leaders. I had to take the letterman off. Jared loves so now I get more comfortable. In life, you're only going to be as good as your leaders, right? Yes, sir. If you're a company, you're a corporation. What's up, big guy? How you doing, man? How's it going, buddy? <laughs> In life, you're only going to be as good as your leader, whether you're a team, whether you're a program, whether you're a corporation. Right now, to my right, the leader of Lady James, the leader of what was sports, the leader of Birmingham Rose. I'm not going to put his, his, uh, his pocketbook out there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about it. This guy is the boss, and he's literally over here ironing. Uh, not ironing. He's vacuuming in vacuuming, the conference room. Yeah. He's vacuuming in the conference room. Conference room. You want to know why we're good? You want to know why we're successful? The guy that leads us is not too good to vacuum in the conference room. God damn it. Give it up for Chad Look Johnson, guy, baby. Man. Give it up for Chad Johnson. <laughs> all right, let's get back on track. Very good. Yeah, so we got, uh, first of all, awesome, is, awesome. is there, I mean, I, one thing, I didn't want to be too creepy when he was here. Jared? But, but no, well, now it's creepy that you said that. Well, I mean, how great of a dress dresser is he? Oh, Jared's, Jared's, oh my he's God. He's a stud. Jared's Stugly. always, uh, he's, he, he's always been smooth. His scarf yeah. game and his hat game, the smoker's cap, as they call him, always been smooth. Him and T. Foss. Would be a good a good uh, <laughs> haberdashery. Saw, yeah. saw T. Foss today. Oh yeah, we had him in on was a Friday. Was he on today? Yeah, yeah we had him in on a Friday. Yeah, he was on the eleven to one show. Big oh look at that! Yeah. Good for that. Terry likes to get his uh, get, get some words in a couple times a week, so oh. we got to get him in. I know somebody else who likes to get their words in. Who's that? You. You. <laughs> Just a little bit. Maz is always sitting there like this. He's always like, oh, I give me just, another one. One more. One more one question. More. Let, me, let me have one hey, more question. I got something for you. How about our Detroit Sports Commission? Yeah, you like that? Ooh. I do. They're, they're in Indianapolis. Trying to get the game here? They're pitching again. I know they pitch every year, yep. and they try to get big events here. But I, I take my hat off to, to Marty Dobeck and the gang at uh, the Detroit Sports Commission. Hats off. They're trying to bring the Big Ten Championship here to Ford Field. Why the heck should it be here at Ford Field? And this is the tweet from Tony Paul. Michigan and Iowa fans aren't the only ones going to Indianapolis this weekend. The Detroit Sports Commission sending a contingent as well as it prepares for an all-on blitz to bring the Big Ten Championship to Ford Field. It should be. At least give it around. Why is Indianapolis the, the kingpin? Who? Who's the number one team in Indiana? You Indiana, know. the Hoosiers? Yeah, really? right. Well, well, the I one think thing, it's because. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, don't I was going to say because the one thing about Indiana, is there. I was well, just well, about to say that. There, and, and it is a great big yes. event city. And so I are think we. Oh. Detroit is also a great big yeah. event city. But the number of hotel rooms, the city of Detroit still lacks it's still in under? hotel rooms. It does. There's a lot of boutique hotels yeah. you know like shinola hotel yeah. and, and there's a couple of the, the, there's a holiday Inn express and there's you only a, have there's five a couple hotels of them. to his point yeah, you only yeah, got yeah, five good yeah. ones i mean the marriott ren the book cadillac, is, uh, the book cadillac but there's those are two big time how about the hotels? mgm motor Three, city four Greek yeah. town I, there's plenty of hotels. Yeah, about here? I don't know. The Daxton. You got, all, you I, got all I hear Townsend. about. All I hear about is the lack of hotel space for big time conventions in downtown Detroit, and they are still under wow. what is needed for a know, lot of I didn't this know stuff. That. So that is that. that is a big reason why. Now is it getting better? Perhaps. Now how about the Hudson's building that they're rebuilding? Is that going to yeah. be part? Is that going to be that's hotels a hotel? Well? That's condominiums. That's condominiums. Yeah, that's condos and, uh, and, yeah, that's, and, that's space, and all yeah. that stuff. That's so, going to be amazing, by the way. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. But but kudos to to Detroit. Detroit has hosted every single big event that this country has to offer. We're a great great post. I mean, you name the event, yeah. and. The, the city of Detroit has hosted it. We Even have. a Ryder Cup, right? I mean, yep. not, not in Oakland Detroit Hills. proper, but yeah. I mean, every major sporting event. Every yeah, single one of golf. them. golf. Hey, I was at that Ryder Cup. Thing. That was a huge event. Yeah. That's, a, that's an international event. Chelsea uh, and Manchester United. I mean, I guess the only thing would be I the Olympics. There. 
But no, you, you know we almost had the '68 Olympics. Yeah, right? nobody even wants the Olympics anymore. The '68 Olympics money, actually, almost were in Detroit, Michigan. The Olympics. Because then, like when you yeah, when you host the Olympics, you have to build these huge Olympic Village type uh, areas and setups, and then you don't use them. Like they, I literally watched something on HBO where they talk about all these countries that host the Olympics, yeah. and they build all these stadiums, they build all these Olympic and areas empty. around it, and then once it's over, they turn into ghost towns, yeah. well, wasted properties. You see and that they on turn real sports? That was awesome. I, real sports, yeah. Yep. I watched that's, that's, real sports. that's why they're changing it so they're making like disposable stadiums where, like, the beds in Japan were disposable so they can use them for other things. Okay, Look, okay, it, fish and. You know, Ford Field is what twenty years old now. Yeah, two thousand. You know, I mean, if you think about it, it needs a facelift. It, it does need a face. This is not the. This is not the same Ford Field with the same stadiums in the country that they had twenty years ago when when um, when the Super Bowl was coming to Ford right. Field and when Final Fours were coming to Ford Field. That was a state of the art stadium back then. At this, this is twenty years old. Hell, I mean, you think about the city of Atlanta. They, they had a they had a baseball stadium for twenty years yep. and got a new stadium after that. So the Ted. Um, if you think about you know SoFi and Allegiant Stadium and even the Jerry uh, World in, Jerry in World's Dallas, amazing. I That's mean, does Ford state. Field compare? No knock on Ford Field. I'm just saying it's it twenty needs new years video old. Boards. That's what it needs. It needs a. St- a video board in the center like Little Caesars Arena has. Little Caesars Arena is state of the art. Just take what they do, and if there's enough room in Ford Field, put one in the middle. I put it to you this way, though. Like I, I 100% agree with you, but I'm not creating a new stadium. I'm not creating new video board. I'm not creating new turf. I'm not creating new seats. I'm not creating new atmosphere if you can't win and you have an incompetent coaches over the years i'm not doing anything new till they win they don't deserve anything new until they win but yes they do need an upgrade uh all right guys we will take a break come right back expected to be joined by jay feely coming up in just a little bit in the meantime uh We'll talk about college football and Michigan's Big uh, Ten championship game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll do it next. Armani and Edwards. World Sports Network, the bottom line. I'm looking to bring on another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Tech. Sports. This part of the show today. Watch again on YouTube or download the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hey, gang, welcome back. Armani and Edwards, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Tom Mazaway. Thanks. Top of the hour here on Woodward Sports Network. It is a Friday in advance of the Big Ten Championship game. I love what you're wearing today, Braylon. That's a good flannel. Appreciate um, that, man. I, this is this is my ode to uh, to Michigan State. You know, they said keep chopping, so I put my, even though even though we don't have Paul Bunyan, this is my flannel to represent Paul now, Bunyan because we're about to chop Iowa down. Now, Braylon, will you go to uh, St. Elmo's at all this weekend, or that's not your jam? No, St. Elmo's is great. I don't know if I'm gonna have time though yeah. because I land tonight. I think I land at ten ten thirty five. I land, go to the hotel, probably watch a movie, knock out. Are they an hour behind us? Yeah, they are. Okay. Central time. So you know. No, Indianapolis the, actually same time. You said what? Indianapolis the same time. No, they're not. They are. I just looked it up. Don't 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 go against fish. I you said don't go against don't fish. Don't go against okay, fish. I, I did. I'll say this. I said the same thing you said this morning. I said they're Central Time. I looked it up. Ooh, we they're not. <laughs> I don't think they fall I, I, back. I, I don't know how to do that. Indianapolis, but USA, they, right they now might, yeah, is they, at three oh three. They, they might be like uh, they might Same be like uh, Arizona. Arizona. They might be like Arizona. Yeah. But what I was gonna say is, no, nah, I, I get there. I'm a knockout. Watch a movie, knockout. Um, tomorrow, I think we have to. We have a video like around the town type deal. I'm doing with Fox that we're gonna be like around the town, nice. kind of hanging out before the game and then the game. So I may not have time to get over to Saint. You're gonna That's see. Right. You're gonna see our man uh, Brady. 
I, Brady uh, Quinn. Tell the people what uh, you're doing there, uh, Braylon. Of so you're, course. You're, you're doing a watch party? Yes. So basically, uh, Fox hit me up. They said, hey, we want you to come out, we'll, you know, fly you out, take care, you know, whatever. And we want you to do a watch party. So me, Devin Gardner, actually, who was here yesterday, it'll be he and I represent Michigan. And then it'll be two Iowa guys. I think it's going to be Bob Sanders and Dallas Clark. And we're just going to be watching the game at the game and, like, commenting, talking some stuff. Kind of like, uh, like Peyton and Eli. Kind of like Peyton and Eli. <laughs> kind of like the Manning brothers. And they're going to show us, I want to say, twice each quarter. Uh -huh. So they'll show us a total of eight times, but we're going to be more so for their live streaming base uh, and Fox. So I'm excited. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. We hang out and you know talk stuff. And I'll watch Michigan hang 70 on a uh, now. Iowa. Well, now d d can you wear your uh, number one Edwards jersey, or do you have to wear something else? All right, so I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm not wearing a number one jersey. Uh, <laughs> I'm not wearing no one jersey, <laughs> but I am going to wear my Letterman. I wear my Letterman to the stadium. I probably, you know, wear something Michigan colored or a nice T-shirt or whatever, but I wear my Letterman. Speaking of jerseys, though, you know what was cool? And, Maz, I want you to talk about the event last night. So I wore to the event that Maz oh, will tell yeah, you about, baby. which is why my voice is hoarse. <laughs> but I wore my Dylan Larkin jersey that I wore yesterday on the, shirt, uh, on the show. I wore it to the event. Well, guess who I got to hang out with, like, all night last night is Colin Larkin. No way. Say? Dylan Larkin's brother. So when I'm wearing his jersey, he was like, yo, you love my brother? I was like, who's your brother? <laughs> he was like, your jersey. I was like, oh, you're Colin. So no great, way. Great night he last night. looks just like him. No, he looked, and, and I feel bad after I said that dumb stuff. He looks exactly like yes. Dylan Larkin, man. But talk about the event last night. Oh, last killer, night. killer's Christmas. And, and Ryan, you beat us to the punch. You were behind the bar at 6 o'clock. We had... What stars? We had Tommy Hitman Hearns with us. We had the Jewel Mike show. We had White Boy Rick uh, pop Rick in. We, we had uh, the Curitan. voice of the Red Wings on television, Ken Daniels. I had, to open up, I had to open up a bunch of beers for Ken Daniels. He was like, Maz, how do you do all this stuff? Lomas. And, uh, Lomas was there. Jamie Edmonds. Oh, so good. The so Hammer. Many, so many great people there uh, uh, to join us last night. It was at the Lodge in Kego Harbor. Uh, we asked Braylon this time. It's his first time that he did it, and I know it ain't going to be his last time because <laughs> I saw pictures of him hanging out with Simo and yeah, who else? Craig who Monroe. else were you hanging with? Craig Monroe, yep. uh, Jennifer Hammond, who was the first big interview. T.J. I, Lang. T. Oh man, me and T.J. got after a little bit. Oh man. yeah. We're, well, that's that's for us. You got out some there. good stories some from T.J. I well, I do. He actually told me a good take about. We'll Let's talk, hear it. We'll, no, 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 no. <laughs> we'll talk about that off the air. Yeah, it, it was involving some quarterbacks. You know what? Good, good for um, about the event though. So Matt Riley is the guy that, that oh, kind of hosts. He is we the call master. it Killers, Killers Christmas. Tom Kowalski. For many of you who know many, many of you know him. Many, some may not. Um, Tom Kowalski was a Lions beat reporter for over thirty years. Uh, the press room, the media room in Allen Park is named the Tom Kowalski Media Room because uh, of all his years covering the Detroit Lions, passed away tragically suddenly Such a good guy. Uh, about 10, 11 years ago. He used to every year have an event called the Killer's Christmas where he tried to raise money for kids in the area, Team yep. Joseph, our children's fund, and then ultimately the Detroit Lions and Detroit Tigers uh, Foundation and, and Charities um, Matt Riley has kept this thing going over the last 10, 11 years or so since Killer's passing. And, and I just shout out to him and the team there that does this because, you know, guys, when, when, when people pass on, and, and that's Ron Turner, the, um, if you're watching on YouTube, the owner of The Lodge who hosted a great event last night. When people pass on, you, you know, you got people in your life that'll uh you know carry something on for a year or maybe two years and then it fizzles out it yeah. fades out and then it goes this guy matt riley has kept this thing going in every year it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. They raised well over one hundred thousand dollars last night for kids in the area. I mean, what uh, a remarkable was... thing! What a remarkable thing! And kudos to everybody uh, in the community uh. that came out last night to the lodge in Kego Harbor. It was an honor to meet your mom <laughs> and your stepdad. I feel like we yeah. are hey, mom. Uh, right. Yep. Happy know, birthday, mom. I mean, it, it just uh it just means so much. Yep. I gave I gave your mom 
a big hug last night. Oh. Like she was like like we were just uh, family, you know, and we had just yeah. met in person that day. And, and she was eating her yeah. nachos. I'm like, where's all the meat? Yeah. She's like, I don't eat meat, but she she was having her nachos. I was like, uh, it was such a great time. Great great meeting them. It was yeah. a very crowded event. Yeah, a lot of people you know don't like to sit around in the crowds, but. They wanted to see their boy behind the bar, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Edwards. No, it wasn't me. No, uh, my mom's huge fans of you guys, and she talks about she literally texts me during the show every day. She texts we talk after the show, talk about the show. So she was excited to meet you, Ryan. Mad, she loves you to death, and she was not to say she doesn't love yeah, you. You're right. Ryan. No, 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 no. She, I, I, I feel the Matt. love. So it was it was great for you guys to finally meet my stepdad. I got a chance to meet you guys. Oh, your stepdad's they, awesome. Uh, he's so laid back and smooth. Like see, that, that's what that's so you know what it's smooth. funny you say he's that smooth. that because I, I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy's smooth. Yeah. smooth. <laughs> he's a cool <laughs> customer. I mean, it's, it's, Charles, it's, Charles Players yeah. is one of the smoothest. Oh, shout out to house. shout to you. Need a Kappa. You know, Kappas are known for being smooth. Yeah. So shout out to the Newt, but smooth guy. But it was a heck of a a great event. Yeah. And I actually got a funny story. So there was a guy about our age there. You know, we're talking to, and he's uh his dad played at Clemson. Uh, he went to Clemson. He didn't play. Hated Michigan. You know, his life hated Michigan. Hated Michigan State. He says he started watching our show, and, you know, he didn't like Michigan, didn't like Michigan State, but his dad played at Clemson, whatever. Didn't like Michigan, watched our show, started watching our show, started falling in love with our show, and started listening to our show. He said for the first time, he said he wore a Michigan hoodie about two weeks ago. Wow. And he says he listens, like he drives back and forth from uh, uh, from here to Columbus for work. Mm -hmm. Says he listens to us on the way down to Columbus and then listens to us on the way back. So I appreciate that right there, big guys. His name was John, by the way. I appreciate you, John. How many people do you think were there last night legitimately? Ooh, 300? Hun yeah. yeah, it was hundreds. At least. Hundreds. Hundreds. It, it, it is funny, and maybe it's just because it's the sports audience, but look, I – you know, I'm not naive enough to uh, shout out to Tim McCormick. Shout out to Tim. Oh, Timmy Matt. But like, I'm not naive enough to think that like, <laughs> you know, not everybody knows we're here still, right? right. Um, people are still trying to find. People are still finding us uh, every day. There's somebody new that is finding Woodward Sports Network on on YouTube, on Twitter, on Spotify, on uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever. You find your podcast. What's Woodward Sports? I see that a lot. Not sure how to find it. Yeah. You know, people are still doing that. I was pleasantly surprised last night with how many people there were talking about something we had said or something we had did or, or a comment here and there. It was remarkable. It made me feel good. You know, It's not a question about it. Hey, I'm parts with the Drew and Mike podcast, too. Mm -hmm. Drew Lane. I've been with them for years and years. And... For people to come up to me, they always say, oh, man, you're the funniest guy. We love Drew. We love you on Drew. But more people now are starting to come up and say, hey, you, Ryan, and Braylon, mm -hmm. we love you on Woodward Sports. That makes me so happy. And yeah. I told you at the Thanksgiving Day game, these those young kids yeah. turned around from two rows back and said, you Maz, I see you. We watch you on YouTube. We love Woodward Sports. And it's great to hear. Oh, something Pass funny. Pass the word. Something funny. So, you know, we did shifts. Ryan was a 67 shift. Oh, yeah. I'm an uh, early guy. I, I'm just, I'm a stop by guy. My, myself and Maz, <laughs> we were the 7 to 8 to shift, although I ended up being the. You were uh, a 7 to 2 shift. Hey, hush your mouth. <laughs> hush, hush your mouth over there. But, yeah, 7 to 2. But uh, somebody was doing a 9 to 10 shift, and his name was Stoney. Oh, and yeah. I so saw oh, my God. Hold it. Hold it. Hold so, hold don't say story. anything. Okay, I won't. Hold the I won't. story. Can we take a break? We can, but I just wanted to tell him. I saw a story first. Oh, I, stop I it. Okay. Be... Stop this. We got to take a break. <laughs> Come right back. We got to hear about this story. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. What Armani and Edwards. World Sports Network, the bottom line. Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins. I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it. Spin. Spin. Uh oh. Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Spin! Spin! Spin till you bleed! Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own lane with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. Want to find out how to start a job in a career that is always essential? Talking about the heating and cooling industry, ladies and gentlemen, that is right. Visit NorthwesternTech.edu. You can find out how you, that's right, you out there listening, you out there watching, can make $77,000 right out of the gate. Visit NorthwesternTech.edu. 
There you go. So, guys, I'm dying to hear this story. Um, Maz, you want to set it up? You do the setup first of why we're talking about starting. So, okay. So, uh, obviously, there was a, a part, uh, there was a point in the Michigan-Michigan State discussion where we were talking about the Michigan defense. Braylon says, I bet you can't name uh, Michigan's Michigan State defensive player. Oh. I said, uh, no, I cannot. Yada, yada. Which was completely trolling, by right, the way. Yes. But, you know, I mean, okay. whatever. It is what it is. There's nothing that I'm going to say or that you're going to say that's going to. I'm not worried about right, it. Right. Right. I know. I'm just saying, like, whatever. It is what it is. But people, like, took off on that. And, um, you know, Stoney and Jansen, 97-1, and, and all these guys, that you know, they're talking about us. Maybe Mike and Rico in the afternoon, whatever, talking about, you know, us and, and the fact that we are so incompetent that we can't even name a Michigan State player, which. Whatever. Um, and so they mentioned myself. So they mentioned, they mentioned Taylor Lewan yeah. and Chase Winovich. Yep, yeah, as uh, players disrespecting the Spartans, and then uh, Stan called in and really, really, really gave it to Stoney and Jansen. Because he now, asked, he said, "Hey, Stoney, what did Braylon say?" Right. And and I love Stoney. We had a great conversation. We'll talk about. It. But he didn't know what I said. Right. But he mentioned that I said something. Right. So here's the kicker. I see Stoney. Hey, Maz, how you doing? Great. You know, we start talking, small talk. How you, you happy? I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. He's like, hey, uh, is Braylon here? I'm like, yeah, Braylon. No, I said to him, hey, Braylon's here. I'm like, he's got a hockey jersey on, too. I see you got the – he had the Canada yeah, Cup the Canada jersey Cup on, Cup, yep. and uh, Braylon had on Dylan Larkin's jersey. I'm like, yeah, Braylon's here. And he's like, oh, I'm like, he's right down there. So then Sony get, he gets to go, and he turns around. He's like, Stan's not here, is he? <laughs> Is that what he said? That's what he said. <laughs> so, then, Braylon, you too. Oh. And then he said to me, I said, no, he's not here. I'm like, I wish he was. And he's like, man, that was crazy stuff. I'm like, we loved it. We all loved it. It's great. It's great. Go talk to Braylon. So I sent him your way. Yeah, so no, it, so uh, listen here, listen here. Uh, it, and by and the way, Jay is on the on the line, waiting one, on us. All right, cool. Sorry. Right. And at one moment, like basically, you know, Sony had a brain fart, and it's okay. And my dad called him on the brain fart, and so it was a little aggressive, but he called him on the brain fart. But I've always, you know, I've always loved Stony. He's a great guy. Like we legitimately hung out last night from nine to, <laughs> to twelve or to one it. so a shout out to us to stone i love it all right great shout out to Stoney. he was nervous though he oh, was man, not he, here, he, he didn't want, yeah he didn't want any part of it uh guys let's bring him in um former michigan wolverine national champ and uh, now part of cbs sports jay feely uh, cbs nfl analyst former U of M kicker <laughs> at jay feely on That's twitter right. uh, jay how you doing buddy I'm great. We finally got a win against Ohio State, so everything's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Jay, before we get into that, like, we want your take on that and what you think about that. We were talking, I text you, and we've talked about it. the unsung hero for this season right now as a player for the University of Michigan. And I don't say that because it's your position. It's got to be Jake Moody. It's got to be Jake Moody. Tell me, your, tell me your thoughts on Jake Moody. Well, I, yeah, I think if you go back the last couple of years, you know, him and Nordine splitting time. I think it did a disservice to both of them. And I said that throughout the, you know, they didn't commit to one of them. They were switching back and forth. And you had two great kickers. And, and they were unable to get the most out of each of them. And, and I think now you're seeing how good he can really be. You know, and he's up for the Lou Groza Award. He's one of the finalists. He's very deserving. Uh, I don't know if he's going to win it or not, but he's one of the finalists. And, you know, I'm just so proud of him that the year that he's had. And, and those are... In, in, the, in a number of games, big, huge, clutch field goals. I mean, you look at some of those kicks that he's made in some of those games, and they're not where they are right now in the Big Ten Championship without him. Jay, you spent, uh, obviously, a, a lot of time in New York, a big television media market. And, um, you know, one of the things about uh, television and media, it's all about eyeballs. You wear the block M. You look at the University of Michigan. They have played in the three highest ranked uh, games of all year uh, in terms of ratings. How important is Michigan football to television ratings? Well, I think college football in general is better when Michigan and Ohio State are great. You know, if those two teams are down, college football is not going to be as good. It's not going to be as compelling. Nothing against Minnesota or Iowa or Wisconsin or, you know, Indiana. You know, if those are your best teams in the Big Ten, it's not going to be as compelling. Just like if Alabama has a down year now, it's not near as, as compelling. When Clemson, you know, now if they're, if they're not as good, it's not as compelling. You know, those big schools, a like USC, 
you know, those blue bud schools are, are what made college football so special because people have rooted for those schools for generations. You know, you have father and son and grandfather and grandson rooting together for a school and, and that brings people together. And that's what's so special about Michigan. You go to those games and there's 115,000 people there that have been coming, you know, for 30, 40 years. Jay Feely with us. He's got the call of the Lions and Vikings this weekend from Ford Field. We'll get to that. I'm sorry, by the way, that you have to watch the Lions game this weekend. But we'll get, <laughs> we'll get to that in just a minute. But how prideful of a moment was this Michigan-Ohio State game for the former players? I mean, Larry Foote, you know, uh, three-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, you know, he, he was on social media wearing his Michigan helmet. Mike Martin there wearing yeah. his helmet. Tom Brady uh, out there there as well so so much pride in the former Michigan football players this weekend what did that win mean to you guys well when we were there you know we we had like when I, the years I was there we were three and one against Ohio State and John Cooper who had excellent teams and did an unbelievable job but couldn't beat Michigan lost his job because he couldn't beat us and, and there's such a pride in in your college I think you know, when you play in the NFL, Braylon did as well, and you, and you play for a bunch of different teams, it's hard to say, like, what your team is. If people say, well, what's your favorite team in the NFL? And I, I don't know. I don't really have one. And you, know, you kind of talk about the different teams and the experiences you had, but it's easy when you talk about what your favorite, you know, team is. It's, it's Michigan. And, and there's something special about your allegiance to your college, going through, battling with those guys, learning to become a man, uh, learning what it means to really work hard. Like, you don't know. I mean, my son was a freshman in college this year at ASU playing, and he had no idea what it meant to actually work hard, you know, until he got there and he's hurting and, you know, they're kicking his butt and he's doing these Friday workouts. Braylon, you remember those from Mike? I hated him. Where you can't I hated walk. him. You know, like, <laughs> I remember Jeff Delvern got a cab to take Jeff. him down. Schembecker Hall back to the dorms because he couldn't walk back up the hill, you know? Because I love they it. They just kill you on Fridays. You know, and, and all of that goes into what makes uh, loving your school like Michigan. That's why these guys who go play pros, like, you see them. If you're in a Saturday locker room, Braylon, remember all the guys wearing all their college stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, especially if you went to a big school. You know, you were betting on your team. Even if they weren't going to win, didn't matter. You are going to take the bet. Lost a lot of money. Team, and you're going <laughs> to support Lost a lot of money. That's right. So that's the thing. I mean, now those guys, are in the, they finally get to collect on one of those bets. <laughs> Uh, I got a question, but it's funny. Uh, you say that. Remember the game, 2006? So uh, Michigan, 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 Ohio State, one and two. Ohio State ends up winning by three points. Oh, yeah. So the week before, I, me, myself, Willie Guinness, and Josh Cribs, we drive up from Cleveland on a Monday after the meeting because you know we have Tuesdays off. We drive up. I go to. Uh, we go to Greek Town. We gamble for like eight, nine hours. I end up winning ninety two thousand dollars. Just playing just playing black just playing blackjack. So like, no, I, I don't no, because I don't gamble anymore, but I won ninety two thousand dollars. Won ninety two thousand dollars. And you know what I ended up doing? The following week I put it all on Michigan against Ohio State and I didn't I didn't know anything about money. I mean a money line versus the, the, you know, points for I didn't know anything. I still don't, to be honest. So I put all the money on ninety two thousand, which I would have made I think I would have got back 240 in total the payout would be that so i was excited we should have got it we ended up losing because of the the, the, the the infamous penalty right but guess what if i would have took the plus three i would have won, oh, oh, won my 92 000 i would have won my 92 you didn't know us yet I, yeah i didn't know anything. but anyway hey so we've talked uh shout out jared irons told me to tell you hello he was on with us earlier big jared he was in studio we've talked about the house state game and we can talk about that too but i want to talk about michigan moving forward do you think they have a chance to beat a team like georgia because i do do you think they could beat georgia Let's, let's get ahead of ourselves for a second. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to beat Ohio, Iowa, you know, on Saturday. And nothing matters. And, and you kind of – if you don't beat Iowa in the Big Ten Championship, the Ohio State game doesn't mean as much as it, as it did. And obviously getting that win was huge because we hadn't beaten them in so long. But you got to go and you got to finish the deal and you got to beat Iowa. You know, and then any of those teams, you get into the Final Four, you know, and, and I have confidence that they can beat any of those teams. You know, whether it's Alabama, you look at them the last couple weeks – and, and how they've struggled and, and barely won those games. They found a way to win, so give them credit. Uh, you look at Georgia, I think Georgia would be tough. It would be a great, great opportunity. But, you know, they don't, they don't blow people out. they got a great defense. 
Um, you know, and, and you look at whether it's Cincinnati and, and whoever the, the fourth team is, like I have confidence that we can beat any of them. And I think we've been getting better every week. The team's been getting better. They're understanding who they are. They understand their identity, uh, you know, and they know how to run the ball well. If, if McNamara can play well and not turn the ball over, then we got a chance to beat anybody. Jay Feely joins us, CBS NFL analyst, of course, kick from Michigan, and uh, a lot of years in the NFL. We appreciate him here. He's doing the game on CBS, the Lions and the Vikings with Spiro Didis. Uh, should be a good game. The last one was good. Lions came back, almost pulled it out. They get the lead. Unfortunately, they rush three guys against uh, Kirk Cousins, makes him pay for it, and Greg Joseph kicks the 54-yard field goal after missing a 50-yarder earlier in that game. So you get this game. Jay, what's your take on our, our poor Lions? Well, they're, they're battling. They're trying to find a way to uh, win a game. That's all you're trying to do there. And, you know, I've been on a team that didn't win a game the first 13 weeks when I was with the Dolphins. And, you know, it's a grind. It's tough to come into work every Monday. It's tough to, you know, put in the effort. But I think as a professional, you know in that situation you're going to be judged by how you go out there and perform and how you go out there and practice. You know, that, that organization is looking at all those guys and they're trying to determine who the foundation is that they're going to build upon moving forward. You know, and I, so I think every guy has to take that and understand that. You know, know you're going to be judged by the effort that you put out there in practice and on the field during the games. And, you know, I, I think it's a tough situation for their head coach, and he's taking over play calling now. And, and there's a lot on this play to be a first-time play caller, to, to take over play calling from the offense coordinator that you decided was going to be your guy before the season and Anthony Lynn, uh, to try to figure out, you know, how to keep building defensively. I think Aaron De Glenn has done a pretty good job with that defense, and, and they've played well the last few weeks. Um, but they don't have a lot of weapons, and they're injured and they're beat up still. And um, you know they got to find a way to protect their quarterback and put him in situations where he feels comfortable, where you can get the most out of Jared Goff. Don't you think Dan Campbell uh, is struggling? Obviously, he's struggling. He's a first-year head coach. Why take on the additional problem of calling plays? I think he's uh, is he hurting himself going forward? Well, Tom, just think about this: if you get your one shot to be a head coach and you see it going poorly and not going the way you yeah. want and you're not winning games, aren't you going to do anything you think you need to do to try to save your job and try yep. to you know, continue to move forward? I mean, I am. Like if it's, yeah. He's waited a long time for this opportunity. He's been in the NFL a long time as a player and now a coach. You're going to do whatever you think is necessary to try to find a way to right the ship and, and, to, and to continue to have that organiz organization and the fans believe that you're the right man for the job. We want him to be that right man. I mean, we desperately want him to be that man. He came in. I showed a picture yesterday. Came in, all bright, bright. You know, he bite kneecaps. He looks so great in his press conference. <laughs> and if you look at him now, he's got his hat sideways. He's slumping down. I feel, I feel horrible for the man. Horrible. A, a, a losing streak can do that too. You know, I was with Cam Cameron in Miami, and he was a one and done head coach. You know, and we went. We only won one game. We went one in 15, and, and it it wears on a head coach. And you're trying to find answers. You're trying to get your players to play better, your coaches to coach better. And it's just it's it's difficult when you go through those situations. And you're putting everything you have into it. Your entire coaching career, you've wanted a head coaching job. You finally get one, and now you haven't won a game in 11 weeks. That's tough. Yeah, shout out to Cam Cameron, a Michigan offensive uh, co coordinator guru back in the day. Also, uh, you know, the San Diego Chargers back in the day. Hey, Jay, I got one for you before you leave. Mel Tucker was announced as the Big Ten Coach of the Year over Jim Harbaugh in Ann Arbor. Tell me, do you think that Michigan's Jim Harbaugh should have won? Do you think Mel Tucker should have won? Or could they have done a co-head uh, coach of the year? Well, I mean, you know, good for Mel. He turned the program around. And Jim did a phenomenal job this year. Nobody thought we would do anything. And here we are in the Big Ten Championship. He certainly was deserving as well. Um, but I know Mel. I, I was with him when he was in Chicago. And great guy. And, and they got a really good person leading that program. And I'm sure he connects well with his team. And you can see that in the way they played on the field this year. But I'm really happy for Jim. I'm happy for those players, those, that coaching staff, just everybody in that organization there at Michigan. Because it has been so tough, you know, since Jim took over, not beating – Ohio State not beating Michigan State much you know you lose those rivalry games and and that's tough to live with all year and so <clears throat> unfortunately they weren't able to take care of Sparty when they had an opportunity to yep. and really should have and the rest didn't help us much in that game but Ooh, we're, we're, talk about it we got everything in front of us you know we got everything right there in front of us Big Ten Championship 
national championship. It's all right there. And I'm hoping they go do it. What's going to be interesting, and, I, and this is the last thing I have to say, is, you know, uh, obviously Mel Tucker won. Jim Harbaugh didn't. For every every argument they throw about why Mel Tucker won, well, he had 40 new players. Well, Jim had nine new head coaches. I mean, not, nine new coaches. Well, you know, he did this. Well, he did this. Well, they beat Michigan. Well, we beat Ohio State. Like, so <clears throat> I'm over it. I've got it out of my system. <laughs> I'm cleansed. I'm done. Doesn't but sound what, like it. But what? No, no. I, what, <laughs> shut up over it, okay? Would you hush? But what's gonna what's hush gonna up, be, Maz? What's gonna be funny though is. Mel Tucker won Big Ten Coach Year, and like you said, rightfully so. I was with Mel in Cleveland, so I, I know Mel Tucker as well. So I'm happy for him. I'm happy that because Michigan State being stronger makes the Big Ten stronger. It makes the state of Michigan stronger now that we're back. But he won. He can have the Big Ten Coach of the Year. You know why? Because Jim Harbaugh is going to win National Coach of the Year. Look at that. How national about that? Coach of the Year. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. I'll take it. I'll That's take it good. too. Hey, I'll Jay, we, too. Jay we certainly appreciate it. Enjoy the game on Saturday and then, of course, uh, on Sunday as well. We'll look forward to having you and Spiro Dinas on the call of the Lions and Vikings on CBS Detroit here in the Motor City. Uh, thanks, Jay. We appreciate it, bud. Go Blue. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate you, Jay, as well, always, buddy. You, uh, you got it, it, Alex, do you have this? Real, I got to pop. This stuff doesn't get old here. Uh, John Harbaugh. Of uh, the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens is he has, wearing pants? That's J.K. Dobbins oh. in a Michigan uh, shirt. Oh, he lost the bet. <laughs> oh, he my. lost the bet. He so J.K. Dobbins wearing the uh, maize and blue of the Michigan Wolverines. The team, the team, the team. Look at that in Baltimore. How about that? That is a tough thing to do because I actually did this before. I made a bet with who the heck did I make the bet with? Uh, Dang. Who was a defensive lineman? Uh, it'll come to me. I'll figure out the defensive lineman name. He played with me in uh, Cleveland. We made a bet on who was going to win. And he was like, if Michigan uh, loses, you got to wear an Ohio State jersey on your next national interview. I was like, come on. That's that's a tough one. So when Michigan lost to Ohio State in the game, I had to wear a, a Ted Ginn jersey on a oh. national Fox interview. It was miserable. And Michigan fans gave me so much grief. I was like, I lost the bet. Hey, shout, shout out to your boys, Tiki and Tierney. Um, they, got saw that? they got bumped up on the WFAN. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're the noon boys now. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Um, Brown was on the show. Let, that means they can come ago. on more. Hey, we got, right. the, uh, we got the pick segment coming up in five minutes from now. Um, guys, we do have some really important breaking news we need to share as well. Um, we need everybody's help as well. Um, need you to be on the lookout. We'll have that breaking news oh, no. development oh, uh, coming up next. And then five minutes, we'll do our picks. Armani and Edwards. Simon Frazier. That was the guy when we made the bet with defensive lineman. Uh, the Woodward Sports Network, bottom line. Fellas, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. We're not a show here, and that's how you answer. We love our sports. We just wish they'd love us back. Detroit Sports for Detroit Sports fans. Woodward Sports. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Hey guys, um, we got some breaking news and, and obviously our show is in the Detroit area so we want to get this out right now. Uh, police say that James and Jennifer Crumbly, they are the parents of 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly who is responsible for the high school shooting at Oxford High School a couple of days ago. They are on the run right now. Um, the Oakland County prosecutor charged James and Jennifer Crumbly earlier this morning Morning, each with four counts of involuntary manslaughter, which carries a 15-year prison uh, sentence and uh, kind of laid out what they knew, when they knew it, and how they could have prevented uh, the shooting that happened in Oxford. Uh, they were to be arraigned at 4 p.m. today. They are on the run. So if you uh, are in the area, if you see them, do not approach them. Contact the authorities immediately. Again, James and Jennifer Crumbly on the run. Be on the lookout. Just the an in, in, in incredibly 
devastating, sad, insert whatever adjective you want to insert, it just keeps getting worse. Um, so uh, I, I felt like it was our responsibility yeah, that, because we're in the Detroit area to kind of keep our uh, yeah. listeners informed, our you know viewers informed of what is happening in the Oxford case, and you'll see it on the national news if you if you, if you were to be watching that. I'm as sure well. they're His, armed as well. Yeah. His, yes, Tom. Yeah. That's why yeah. police do not want you to approach them. These have got to be the worst parents ever in life. Yeah. These got to be the worst parents ever in life. It, obviously, you see what the young individual did. We can, you won't have to talk about that. We've talked about it enough. But for your son to do what he did, okay, and be in police custody, to be in jail, and you as his parents who are responsible, just as responsible, for you to leave, for you to up and leave your son, like, no matter what he did, that's still your son. You helped create this. Mm. And to leave your son, to go on the run, they are real POSs. Mm. And you guys know what that stands for. Yep. No doubt about it. So, um, again, there is no easy transition to get to sports. Uh, but we are going to take a break. When we come back, we'll do our pick segment. We'll continue on. But, again, uh, James and Jennifer Crumbly, who were each charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter, on the run. Again, if you see them, do not approach them. Contact authorities immediately. Armani and Edwards, the bottom line, Woodward Sports Network. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. Choosing between a 15 or 30 year mortgage can be difficult, which is why we offer the Modern Mortgage, a flexible term that's customized for you. 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us online at callhallfirst.com. The Lions pregame show, covering everything you need to know for game day. Join pros and Joes as we cover our hometown Detroit Lions. Hey, last night at uh, the Killer Christmas, I had a little bit of that gypsy vodka. That's why I Ubered home. Last night it was great. It was really good. Gluten free. Like I, I keep telling you about Ooh, this stuff. Wee. This stuff is real. This stuff is the real deal. Real deal. Had a great time last night. Had some gypsy vodka. Had a little bit of grapefruit juice infused with it. Gluten-free. Corn distilled six times. The stuff is amazing. You can tell that those 50 formulas that they tried out, they picked the right one. They picked the winner. They picked a really darn good one. Also, also, I woke up feeling fine today, by the way. I woke up feeling fine today, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah, you did. This stuff is good. Drink this stuff gypsy. is really, really legit. Gluten-free Gypsy Vodka. Go to your, lo your local neighborhood liquor store. Ask for Gypsy Vodka. Artesian yeah. water. Ooh, ooh, oh, wait. there you Say go, it. fish. And if they don't have it, tell them to get it. Tell them Adam and Mike said get that stuff in there. But once again, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Also, gang, let me tell you about Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. They're located on Michigan Avenue in the city of Dearborn. You want to buy a car, they've got one for you. Don't worry about that chip shortage. They'll get you in and out. Uh, no problem. Chevy will coming up momentarily. He'll tell us all about that. Also on their pre-owned lot, any make, any model. And speaking of that, Maz, uh, we have a sale today. We do. Our own Kennedy Broadwell has got herself a new ride. She's got herself a Buick yeah, Encore. Kennedy. She swapped in her car. They took great care of her. They paid it off. They paid her what she wanted, and she puts down a down payment on her brand new one. So. What was her car, Mass? Uh, she had a 2019 Jetta. I just called it a Jalopy, that's, but it is a Jetta. That's what I wanted She had a 2019 say. Jetta and turned it in and bought a Buick Enclave from you the pre-owned lot. How about that? Les Stanford, your one-stop shop for that. How about it? And I got get, another friend that needs something going here. She's he does the exact that. same Ooh. thing. She's Look at that. She's, yep. got, she's got she got some money over there. We are taking care of business over at Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. Doesn't matter whether you own the car or lease the car because Les Stanford is your authorized lease return center. Check them out online, lesstanford.com, lesstanford.com, or you can give them a call today, 313-565-6000, 313-565-6000, Les Stanford Chevrolet find new roads and speaking of les stanford chevrolet let's bring him in the great chevy will my friend chevy will how we doing buddy what's going on yes yeah, clap it up clap it up hey will you better unmute your mic will there you go <laughs> will how you doing buddy i'm good. We hear I'm hanging you. in there you guys all right 
Doing yeah. great. What do you got today? What's what's happening over there on the lot today? Um, a little bit of snow is a little wet out there, but we still are cranking out blazers. I mean, I've been we've been bringing them down. Our lot is cool. If you drive by, you're going to see nothing but RS blazers, LT blazers. So we do have options. We do have vehicles greatly available. Awesome stuff. Yes, sir. All right, how's your pick game going? Uh, Will you ready? He wasn't so he wasn't so good two weeks ago. You struggled no, a little I bit two it. weeks ago. You struggled a little bit there. I thought you were thinking about that. No, 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 no. I you took a week off. We trust got me, back now. Will, trust me, nothing gets by this guy. Okay, I can attest to that. How do you remember that? I'm like, I took a week off. Maybe they'll forget, you know? No, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, get, Fish, give me some music. Let's get to it. College football. Here we go. Tonight. And the, here. And here we, we go. go. Uh, Pac-12 championship game. Oregon and Utah. The Utes, a three, or excuse me, a two and a half point favorite over Oregon. Uh, Maz, who you got? A rematch. This is, this is a game for tonight. Utah absolutely destroyed Oregon the last time they played. It's tough to beat a team twice, especially embarrassing them. I think Oregon in the points tonight. I like the Ducks. Will. Uh, you know what? I think the third time's the charm uh, for the Utah on the Pac-12 uh, championship game. Um, Oregon kind of sucks, I think, with the run game. But last week they did pretty good. Um, but Utah <laughs> is uh, more stifling up front. So I, I think I'm going to have to go with Utah because I think the third time's the charm. Uh, Braylon. Chevy Will knows his stuff. I'm going with Chevy Will. I'm taking Utah. Yeah, I'm going with Utah, too, even though Utah. I don't pick. Um, all right. Here we go. Baylor and Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. The Cowboys, a five-and-a-half point favorite against Baylor. Maz. I think Okie State keeps it rolling. Love Mike Gundy. He's a man. He's over 40 now. Give me the Cowboys. Give me the Cowpokes over the Bears. Will, Oak State, five-and-a-half, uh, Baylor. Uh, I'm going with Baylor. I think that they're both, you know, it's going to be a high scoring game, two fifty team, but I think Baylor's going to pull it off. Braylon? I'm going with Baylor as well <laughs> because when he made that comment, talk about Mike Gundy, was I'm a man, I'm 40. It was a whole charade because the kid that he was talking about and his mom came on and talked about it. He said, Mike Gundy is not representing me. I'm going with Baylor. Uh, Maz against the world so far so through far. two who, games. Who you take it, even though you don't pick? Uh, Oak State. Okay. I like Oak State this week. Um, Georgia, Alabama. This is really the game that a lot of people are no talking doubt. about. Bama, a six and a half point I'm favorite. Smiling. This, or excuse me, six and a half point underdog. Georgia is the favorite. This is the first time in Nick 11 Saban's or 12 history. years. Uh, Nick Saban's last time he was an underdog LSU and Alabama. was to Georgia. A one-point underdog was oh, Alabama in 08 or 09 was or that something Tua? like that. That no, wasn't two. No, no, it was, no, 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 it was like 10, 11, 12 okay, years yeah. ago. Uh, Nick Saban was a one-point underdog to Georgia, a six-and-a-half-point underdog now, Maz. How bad do they want you to take Alabama in six-and-a-half? I know it. That's why. Give me the opposite. Yep. Give me the dogs. I'm telling you. Uh, Will? Uh, a matchup nightmare for Bama. I'm sorry. Georgia's going to roll up. Uh, Braylon. What have I said all year? What have I said all year? Don't, I mean, when Nick Saban's Saban, smiling. He's Al playing with house money. Nick Saban has been cheesing his booty off. He has been enjoying it. Alabama is the number one team in the country in the fourth quarter. Bryce Young is the best quarterback in the country. They have the second best wide receiver core in the country. Georgia's offense is... You don't even know anybody besides the guy with 19 names at quarterback. Stetson Bennett, fourth the third, the 19th the third. <laughs> They're not going to do anything. Alabama is going to beat Georgia, I promise you. Right. Ooh, we. Uh, so I bet 92,000. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell you. Never um, again. If, if, if you're playing the number, so, sometimes if the number looks too good, it usually is. I'm taking the money line on that game. I'm taking um, down. Okay, guys, two more. Now, three more college football games. Cincinnati has everything to play for. A 10.5-point favorite against Houston. Uh, Maz? I'm taking the Bearcats. They got something to prove. They want to stay in that top four. They better show up. The only non-neutral site game, by the way. Oh, Since he's home. Since he's home? Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, the non-neutral site game. Oh, I don't like that. Um, Will? 
Um, it seems like every time you guys say it, like since he has something to prove, <laughs> that they end up proving it on the national spotlight. So I'm going with Cincy on that. Cincy. Bray? I'm going with Houston. Wow. You haven't picked one game with me. Nope. I'm going against <laughs> you, man. I, I started down this road, so okay. I, got, I got to stay. Go Look, ahead. Man. Hey, man, it's a lonely highway. It is. It's a lonely highway. Uh, I'm two, taking Houston. Two more college games, guys. Hold Pitt. on. What game are you have to pick it? Uh, Even though I'm you don't go with I, 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 I just – something stinks about Cincinnati. I don't – And Houston. at home. So I, really I go Houston. I go Houston. Go ahead. Um, Pitt, Wake Forest. Uh, Pitt – is a three-point favorite against Wake Forest. A lot of people talking about Kenny Pickett having the flu this week. Uh, so Isn't that the Lions' new quarterback? Jordan. Yeah, Kenny Pickett with the flu. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm old enough to remember when people called that COVID. Um, but uh, people... Um, so we'll see what you happens there this week. One. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, I, I did mess- not mean any disrespect. I, I'm, by the I'm messing with yes. you. Yes, uh, Maz. I'll get the Panthers just because uh, Dan Marino and uh, Tony Dorsett. <laughs> That's a way to okay. do it. Uh, Darrell, Will Darrell Reeves. Uh, I'm going with uh, I'm going with the. I think they got a better quarterback. I know it's going to be a shootout, but they got a better quarterback. Bray, 4,000 yards, 40 touchdowns, six interceptions, and he will be at the Heisman next Saturday. Can he what pick if it he does play? have the flu, though? Will that affect him in He'll, this one? Then, does that bother you guys? Well, you, you know what? what? Somebody else had the flu in 1997, and it worked for them. So. Jordan. There you go. Uh, you said what? <laughs> So the food does not affect greatness. Okay. See, he knows. Chevy Will knows uh, his stuff. Okay, guys, Michigan and Iowa, the Wolverines at 11 points. Tom Brady fa- had COVID at An 11-point favorite at uh, Indianapolis against Iowa. Maz. Lay the points till it hurts. Michigan. Go blue. Yep. Will. Uh, I, I got to agree, actually, for once with uh, Maze here. I'm, I'm going with Michigan. <laughs> they got everything to play for. Uh, Braylon. Michigan's going to put 70 on Iowa. I don't know if they're going to put 70 up, but I think they're going to handle it. They, they, they are. This team is going to finish oh, the job. Oh, oh, oh. They legitimately could have put 60 on Ohio State, and they called off the dogs. They, they were waiting all year. Mm-hmm. Josh Gaddis was waiting. He set us up all season. And then finally the old state game, he said, it's, it's kind of like Rocky IV. Remember when Drago was fighting <laughs> Apollo Creed and Drago kind of was just messing around and he was chilling. He took some punches and he was relaxing yeah. and he, he was doing this. And then his corner man said, Trisha! and then Drago beat the hell out of <laughs> Apollo. Same thing. Josh Gaddis wow. has been waiting all season. And finally against Old State, Josh Gaddis said, Trisha! and they beat the hell out of Old State. They're putting 70 on I line. love it. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, I got to watch Rocky IV again. Yeah, there you go. go. Uh, Let's get to the NFL, guys. Um, The Chargers and Bengals, Cincy, a three-point favorite. We're going to let Will go last. Braylon, you go first. Uh, Cincy minus three over the Chargers. Cincy had a big win last week. Justin Herbert's been struggling. Give me a pick. Chargers. Chargers. Uh, Maz? They get back on track. Chargers, man, they've been really bad. Really bad. I I think they continue to be bad. I got to take Cincy at home. Uh, Will? Uh, first off, I'm about to go six for six on all these uh, NFL ones. All right, yeah, okay. I love this. Bink. Keep dreaming. It's going to be the pink ones all day at home. Charlie, you better keep Charlie selling those Blazers. Blazers. Six-team parlay <laughs> here. Will goes with the, uh, Will the thrill. Cincinnati Bengals minus the three. Cards Bears in an ugly one. <gasps> Soldier Field. Is, this one might be five to three all final score. All these games score. are ugly. Kyler's back, right? Right? Kyler's back. Um, yeah, Kyler's um, back. The right. Cardinals a seven-and-a-half point favorite over the Bears. Braylon. Now, the way you guys play, uh, I will take the Bears on the points. But if I was just baiting the game, the Cardinals are going to win. Well, I, that's I, I'll, the I'll obviously the on the money line. But the Bears plus seven and a half. I'll you take have. Bears. Okay. Matt, uh, Matt, Matt Nagy can only beat the Lions. He's seven and one. Exactly. Against everyone else, he's nothing. Right. G- give me, the, give me the, uh, whatever the hell's playing. Arizona. Them. Yeah, give me Arizona. Will, Arizona, seven yep. and a half point favorite. Uh, I'm going with the uh, I'm going with the cards. I can't stand the Bears. Arizona. Uh, uh, yep. Nobody likes the Bears. Uh, well, football team at the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like that, don't you? Get a name. The Raiders are a two and a half point favorite. As we root, we continue to root for the Raiders of here course. on the season win Three total. More. <laughs> two more. Two more. Two more. Uh, we know somebody that's got the over seven and a half uh, for season win totals are at six. It's good for uh, Woodward Sports. Yeah, Raiders, two and a half point favorites over football team Braylon. 
I'm taking Tyler Heineke. It's something about this guy. It's Football about team, WFT. Tyler Heineke, at quarterback, man. Something about him. He gets it, man. This guy is, is, is driven. He's a leader. He's fearless. I like him. I like Gibson at running back as well. I'm going with I'm going with football. Maz. Team. Hey, Ron Rivera's got these guys. I showed you the football video a couple team. days yeah, ago. He did. But I'm not picking any team that doesn't have a name. Oh. Give me the Raiders. Uh, Las Vegas. Uh, Will, what do you say, Raiders and football team? This is my only like not sure pick out of all six of them. And I did just watch watch the football team just beat up the Hawks and I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to agree with Braylon on this. I'm going to go with the uh, Washington football team. Smart man. WFT. Smart man. Kind of like WTF. You know what Mark, um, Mark Fellower calls the Washington football team? What's that? The Radskins. Oh, look at that. Uh, what about <laughs> too close? I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know what the hell that means. Um, you know, hey guys, the, uh, the Pittsburgh skins. Steelers look like an absolute unmitigated disaster, which means they're going to win this week, right? Steelers, a four and a half point dog against the Ravens. Um, they're begging you to take the Ravens here, Maz or Braylon. I'm taking the Steelers. I'm yep. taking the Steelers. I think they, this they is have Pittsburgh looked horrendous. written all over. You heard it. Ryan Clark, former uh, former Steeler uh, great for years on ESPN. You heard him talking about the, the defense. They're not the same team anymore. They don't like. They lack the intensity. They heard that. They've been hearing these guys all week. They heard that. I'm taking the Steelers because I love Lamar Jackson. But he's throwing like nine. He's throwing. He's averaging three interceptions a game in the past two games. I'm going with the Steelers. Mass. I'm sick of the Steelers. Give me the Ravens. Ravens, Baltimore, Will. Um, uh, you know what? Uh, is Lamar Hill playing at quarterback for the Ravens? Or, I mean, Tyson Jackson or whatever you know. No, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Playing. Yeah, you got that wrong twice. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> Lamar Hill is playing. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go with uh, the Ravens just because I think the Steelers are absolute garbage, and the uh, cardiac cats uh, did beat them technically in a tie ball game there. In, uh, Good point. Look at that. All right, guys, two more, and I'm up against it, so we got to race through these. Uh, Chiefs at home, a nine-and-a-half-point favorite over the Broncos, Braylon. Chiefs. Chiefs. KC. KC, KC, Will? Chiefs, better quarterback. KC, 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 run the board. Last one, Vikings-Lions. They're begging you to take the Motor City Kitties. The Lions, a seven-point dog. My Minnesota Vikings, seven-point favorite. Braylon, who you got? Purple people eaters. Yep. There you go, Maz. Lions are seven and four against the spread. That's what we're betting, right? Yep. Give me the Honolulu blue and silver. Lions will. Uh, I'm going with the Fort Smile Spartans on this one all day. You know what I'm saying? Lions. Yeah. Lions. You do realize that uh, DeAndre Swift's not playing. We right? understand. Yep. We. Are, the, the, okay. I mean. I'll be there. Neither is Dalvin Cook, but that means Matt Madison's yeah, going to run for a buck. He, he had 150 probably. last game against him. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Hey, Chevy Will, uh, we love you. You got an extension you want to throw out over there or no? Yeah, hit me up at extension 1488. You can ask for any of the boys in Midtown. We'll take good care of you. Come down and see us. Seriously, we'll have a blast. Look at that. Chevy Will over there. Right, Chevy. Uh, Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac in Dearborn on Michigan Avenue. Again, Chevy pick, Will. Uh, we, uh, the great Kennedy went there today, picked up a vehicle, Matt sold before. hers back. Found new roads. Find new roads. Chevy Will, we appreciate it. Got to get to a break. No uh, bottom line videos edge. of the day next. Bye bye. Let's See ya. Follow us everywhere. Just search Woodward Sports on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, IG, and more. And more. And more. And more. Tony is a third generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust resistant and made for all weather use. And the double roll lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. Hey gang, I want to let you know about Guardian Alarm. They're your local security experts for over 90 years. Guardian Alarm gets it. All you got to do is basically do this. Call the number and help yourself out. Protect your family. 1-800-STAY-OUT! That number again. 1-800-STAY-OUT! Stay out of the yeah. end zone. Stay out of my home. You don't have to tell the Lions that. Stay out of everywhere. Ask for Jason. Ask for Jason. Yeah. Tell him Ryan and Braylon and Matt Look sent out. you. Stay Look out. out. Stay, stay out. 1-800-STAY-OUT. $75,000. Right.
<laughs> Go Guardian. Wicked awesome. Find your rogues. You are something else. Or fish, I mean. Fish, I love Good you. Go find and follow the potholes. I love all you guys, man. This is this Shut is that mic off, fish. Remarkable. You don't need a good defense uh, to stay out the end zone if you're Detroit Lions. All you need is their offense. Right. Hey, bottom line videos of the day, Maz. Dan Campbell's going to have a, his coming out party this week, by I the way. I think they're going to lose. I think he's going to have his coming out party. They're going to they're gonna be, they're gonna be in that game. It's week 13. Well, I know. What you know what? Lions I guess I pray big. for the guy. Well, you heard what uh, Jay Feely said. He yeah. said they uh, they didn't win their first game in week 13. So uh, maybe that's Could be the Cam Cameron. Uh, sweepstakes here for I love Cam uh, Cameron. He was off Cam his Cameron. My, my dad was right there. Hey, we've been talking about Brian Kelly all week. Uh, Jerk. Turns out he's really, you know, <laughs> probably not a good guy, but he's rich. He's a very good coach, but uh, probably not a good friend or nothing because none of his staff followed him to LSU. Zero. So LSU had him out uh, to their basketball game, him and his wife. And uh, we're going to play a cut from when he was with Notre Dame. And I want you to listen to the word family. Listen to the way he says family with Notre Dame. And family. Listen, listen to his new way of saying family, family as a southern gentleman. Here is Brian Kelly, then and now. Those incredible 12 years of my life for me and my family um, being here in Notre Dame. It's a great night to be a Tiger. I'm here with my family, and we are so excited to be in the great state of Louisiana. But more Those incredible 12 years of my life, for me and my family, um, being here in Notre Dame. It's a great night to be a Tiger. I'm here with my family. Family! We are so excited. What a total great... jerk, man. Oh, is he a farce? I hate that guy. I hate that guy. I'm telling you this much right now. Brian Kelly will not last four full seasons in Yeehaw! Baton Rouge. Are Baton you willing Rouge. to bet your family? No, on? I'm not willing to bet my family. Yeah, uh, you know, for me. Not it, lasting four full seasons. So sometimes when you hang around like country people, like, like, like country accents, like down south, like it does wear on you. Like, but that's only if you have a country back, uh, accent and background yourself. He's from up north, straight up north. Like, come on, Brian Kelly. Right. Come on, like, man. Like, come on, like Brian Kelly. What are you doing? Right, dude. Spent 13 years at Grand Valley State, then another Central. four at Central Michigan, Notre then Dame. Cincinnati, then Cincinnati. Notre Dame. Like, dude's Brian lived Kelly. in the Midwest his whole life. Brian Kelly, what are you doing? Like, Family. Oh. This is this is turning into it. You know what it's turning? It's turning to a parody. Right. Like it's turning to a real life parody. Jerk. Hate that guy. Well, good luck to Notre Dame and the boys. I'm sure Certainly. they're not going to miss him. And I got one for you. Bo Jackson, one of your favorites, Braylon. Oh, man. Had his birthday this week. Time. Had his birthday this week. Bo knows everything, right? Yeah. Let's listen to Dick Emberg. Just a Bo oh, Jackson Dick touchdown. Emberg. Listen to the great. Oh, Central the great Michigan University. Dick Emberg. God bless him. Seven of the 14 AFC teams starting today tied for first place. Well, Cincinnati's moved ahead of Pittsburgh. Maybe Houston in the Central. Buffalo ahead of Miami in the East. And now the Raiders, can they stay with Kansas City? Bo wow. says no. Jesus They're not going to catch Christ. me. What a stud. What could have been, huh? Art Jesus Shell. Jesus Christ. Is that, is that not arguably the best backfield one season oh ever? Marcus Allen you got and two Bo Jackson. Look at Steve Atwater. You just get blown up. But he gets up, though. Like he almost catches he him, did. though. Watch Boom. this. Watch Steve Atwater. Humphrey. Watch Steve Atwater catch up, though. Well, not from this angle. You can't mm. see it. Um, My goodness. You talk about the the greatest what if story, like Maz said. That's the greatest what if story ever in the history of the NFL. And the cool thing about it, man, like the, his greatest accomplishment wasn't being in the NBA all MLB All Star and the Pro Bowl in the same year, mm. mind you. Getting drafted in MLB in the first round, playing football, mind you. No, no, it wasn't. His greatest compliment or his greatest achievement was dislocating his hip. Being out of football, like most people dislocate their hip, it's over. Still coming back and playing for the White Sox and hitting 27 home runs in 1993. Greatest one ever. I take you back seven years ago tonight. It was the miracle at Ford Field. Oh. Going the wrong way. Six years ago? Fine. It's Aaron Rodgers to Richard Felt like Rogers. seven. Check it out. 
to Rodgers to Rodgers. How about that? Rodgers gets it the other way. He's thrown down. We got a flag. The game's not over. Grabbed it by the face oh, mask. Oh, man. That Put a mic up. Taylor. Are you kidding me? Here we go. Get out of here, Sue. For the winning kick by Myers. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Where was replay? They should be able to replay these. They still can't. Right, they can't in Canada. All right, let's, let's not talk now when he's throwing the ball. I got to hear Jim Nance. Tony? This was before Tony. Look at awesome. This was Phil Sims. Oh, love Phil Sims. Oh, man. I never liked Phil Sims. Here we go. Here we go. Listen. Him or his son. Rogers. Here he goes. It's going to get there. He's amazing. He turned 38 days ago. Oh, my God. Rodgers to Rodgers. Richard Rodgers with a walk-off touchdown. Oh, my God. He walked him off. Yep. Jim Nance had his best. Look at the Lions. And they still had a great year. And they still and they lost that game. They still finished. And then they get screwed by the Cowboys. Unbelievable. Uh, guys, go blue. Braylon, get us out of here. Can't wait till Monday morning, guys. Jay Feely, Jared Irons, appreciate you. Our guests appreciate our guests all week. This has been a hell of a week. We appreciate you as a fan base, what you guys are doing for us, supporting us. Mike G, guys like that. You do it every day. You already know what time it is. Tomorrow, Michigan, first time in Indianapolis. And guess what? It won't be their last. Go blue. Kick some booty. Armani and Edwards. World Sports Network, the bottom line. Thanks for the week, gang. the last eight for Michigan State. Walker got the head up. Another elite find, and Bingham the jackpot. Bingham got the steal, and it looks like there was a turnover on the inbound for Lewis.